begins ladies and gentlemen so it begins welcome everybody to my new uh to the latest uh, live stream i'm doing i decided just to do this as a complete impromptu thing so it's completely on the on the fly as you can see and um <laughs> sorry about that the opening you just dealt with <laughs> for lack of a better term was uh, sort of my salute to Ernie Kovacs, a comedian who has been a big influence on me uh, growing up, having to watch a lot of his uh, archived footage from videotapes and uh, television broadcasts. And uh, today was his birth. Today was his birthday, although he died a while back. And he's a very kooky comedian who played around with the medium of television. Um, that we would not see again until many, many years later. In fact, a lot of his humor is very reminiscent. It's very reminiscent of some of the more bizarre stuff you'd expect out of Monty Python or Kids in the Hall. Uh, but he was also very much a man of the 50s and 60s. So I had that kind of... Imagine if, say, uh, Monty Python, Groucho Marx, and Kids in the Hall went into one of those teleporting tubes uh, from the fly and uh, merge into a singular terrifying entity. And that still wouldn't be a very good description of how to explain this guy. So uh, so deep apologies about that. Um, but yeah, here we go. Um, I'm using Google Hangouts and my live cam right now. Um, there are two people watching. If you are there, say hello. If you are there. If you're there, say hello, everyone. At the very least, I think I'm going to have Brayton Connor with us in a little bit. I'll see if I can invite him. Um, and I'm going to leave the live cam on throughout the whole uh, night's festivities, largely because um, I want to show off some artwork I'm doing. I could do live screening. But based on the last live stream, the minute I turned the webcam off, uh, the audio settings go horrible on my end. 
and I want everyone to sound good, not just me. Uh, so there we go. But just just to be safe, I'm also turning off the speakers. The speakers were only on for the musical interlude. Um, by the way, that music was used for one of Erdie Kovac's favorite recurring sketches uh, for a fictional band of uh, primates called the Niobe Trio. And I, oh, oh, I just had the song up. Oh, and apparently the song itself was Sofegio, Sofegio, uh, which was, oh, Robert Maxwell's rendition of, um, hold on, hold on, let me get this right. This is what happens when I do things live. So, and I've yet to pour myself a drink, as you can see. Oh, look at all that water I'm going to drink. I'm going to enjoy that. Mmm. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. There's two viewers, but one of them is most likely me. <laughs> and the other one is Brayton. And I'm going to bring in Brayton because um, I kind I kind of add names to emails. Bray Brayton Connor will be invited. All right. So that way I'm not completely alone in the show. And um, I was originally planning on talking about those uh, blasted Catholic school kids, um, but I decided not to, although I do have a lot to say about it. And it's less political than it is just a general observation that the kids in question are just, they're just obviously dumb teens that got into a mob mentality. And like a lot of teenagers, unfortunately, I don't think they had the best interests in mind, regardless if they were Republicans or Trump supporters. In fact, I think they would honestly throw honest to goodness, sincere, true American conservatives, much different than the wackaloons we have in Congress right now, under a bus for a quick laugh. And I think they're the kind of people who only voted for Trump just to get a quick laugh without even seriously thinking. But then again, isn't that all up, all politics these days? It's more reactionary, emotional nonsense than, you know, actually thinking things through. And that's how we end up with really crappy candidates on both sides. Like I know there's Trump at the same time. Hillary was a terrible idea, but that's as political as tonight's streaming is going to get. I want this to be fun. I want this to be happy. And I'm going to keep my vicious vigor and anger to a minimum. So there you go. That's my little gift to you. Um, but yeah, so I'm going right now. Uh, I'm going to inform Brayton Connor that he that an in, invite has been sent. Brayton, I have invited you. That's completely spelled wrong. So, and uh, okay. Oh, okay. Now it begins. Yeah, I was having trouble with the live stream a little while ago, so sorry if um, if your guys are on the wrong link. So, but there you go. Um, so, uh, what to think about, what to do. Well, let me get out of this, since this was my little homage to Ernie Kovacs, the Raff and Shoma show, with the Niobe Trio music playing. And forgive me, I got a little bit of the burps, because I just drank a whole bunch of water. Look at that. <laughs> That's that's gonna be my lifeline for tonight. So there's more drink there's more drinky coming. So uh, uh, that cold hurts my tooth. <laughs> All right. Okay. Not able to join at the moment, dealing with personal Oh, sorry, sorry, Brayton. Okay. I will hold the fort. Please. All right, it looks like I'm um, by myself tonight. Um, I'll see if uh, Andres wants to hang out. Although, again, I I totally did this completely on the fly. This isn't like last time where I gave everybody a, a very good, decent heads up. This is a uh, this is not, <laughs> this is going to be a disaster. If you thought the first live stream of consciousness was bad, ooh, ooh, wait until you get a load of this one. So, all right, let me see. I will invite little Andres Perez, our little Mexican robot boy. I will also see if I want to invite. Hold on. 
who else do I invite? Oh, Crooked Lord. And maybe let's see if Wynn wants to join with us today. So, like I said, I'm not going to turn off the web camera, but I will be working on artwork as I'm doing this at the same time. So I'm multitasking. I am currently working on Brendan Tennell's next title card, which should be done tomorrow morning. So I'm pulling all nighter. And if I succeed, I'm going to the movies and staying up and staying up for quite a bit. But it's not going to be like last time where I'm staying up desperately. Um, it's just me just going to enjoy a morning movie and then come back to come back to the house and rest. So, all right. So let's get out of this. By the way, I think YouTube might uh, <laughs> might cause trouble later on if I decide not to. Uh, I don't know. Copyrights. YouTube is weird like that. All right. So I really. Uh ah! Uh, someone's here. Uh, yeah, you kind of called me on my phone. Let me, uh, if you could oh. get on the Hangouts link through Skype, that would probably oh. be a little better. Okay, I'm sorry, Elise. You, you spooked me. You scared me. <laughs> um, yeah, I did. Well, think hey, I saw it go off, so I figured I. So I figured you were calling. <laughs> right, right. I did send the email for the link, but I'll I'll see if I can try to send the link through Skype. So. Okay. Google. Oh, there. Yeah, there's the address. Let me do it through Skype. So, I'm so sorry about that. I just threw, I just I just threw a fishing line out into the ocean and saw who would catch, and you're the first one here. Tasty bait. Um, nom 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 nom. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I caught myself a mermaid, and she's home wrecking my house. <laughs> I don't have enough mermaid food to go around, and I got seven cats and three dogs. <laughs> And the entire organization of glue. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like like full grown people and like baby bids. It's like we want food. Man. So uh, all so right, I, well, hold that thought. I shall return. Okay, all right. <laughs> Scared the hell out of me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's like I'm by myself. I'll be totally okay. Hi there, Raph. <laughs> <laughs> That's my impression of uh, me me getting scared. So. Oh, hello there. Oh, okay, you made it. Okay, excellent. Let me. Okay, so it worked out. Hi, Win. How you doing? Uh, or... Doing all right. Just kind of dinking around before I have to get ready for work. Oh, okay, okay. So you'll be here with us for a short while, I gather. Oh no, I I have everything set up for work, so I can probably stay for an hour or two. Okay, okay, that's great. Give 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 yourself an hour and, and take the other time to get to work, so it's okay. And like I told everybody on the live stream, I'm going to be multi. Well, I am terrible at multitasking, so I'll be working on this little illustration here while I talk to people. So try, but this is the next tile card I'm doing for Brendan Tennant, and it's based on the surprisingly good 1986 horror comedy um, movie House which is the worst title ever because there's like five other movies out there that are named house or and totally. a medical drama named house. <laughs> I was about to get to that guy, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I hate to say it. One of the things that makes a movie obscure is it has a very generic title. I, although I know house has a bit of a following, um, it doing a Google search was not, not a good idea. <laughs> so. Yeah. You're going to get a butt ton of uh, results. Yeah, that is true. So, but it's like, thankfully, it's it's a well known enough movie that doesn't get lost completely underneath the um, underneath the search results, for lack of a better term. So it's like there's, as you know, I'm a big fan of Japanese monster movies, and uh, there there are some titles that are just so ridiculously generic. It's like, why even bother looking for them? <laughs> so it's like the only examples I can think of is the Sea Serpent, uh, the Crucifiers. And um, Slave Beast. And uh, yeah, those aren't exactly the most Google friendly searches you can do. So, all right. So, seeing any good movies lately or television shows or anything of that insane nature? Um, let's see. I recently went to go see Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. I would highly ah. recommend it. It's really good. I, I saw it uh, t on the first week it premiered. Actually, I think I saw on the first Tuesday of the week because I'm one of those cheapskates that pays for the $5 discount days. 
Um, but I haven't seen it since I actually, if things go well with me in this illustration, I plan on going and seeing it tomorrow morning as sort of a little, uh, a little reward for getting this, uh, commission done in time. So, but yeah, oh no, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, what did you think of the animation though? It's like some people say it's a little too choppy. I felt it was choppy at places, except for the action sequences. In some places, but I think they did it on purpose to kind of give it a 2D feel, and I could see why. Mm -hmm. And the way the coloring job was done, it looked like the granules you see in the effects of a comic book inking. Oh, yeah, that's like with the, like the heavy spots. and uh, Yeah, but... they kind of wanted to combine various animation on top of the whole uh, comic book format. Mm -hmm. It does work. So, and I'm I'm not that big of a comic book person for various reasons, um, but do, do you feel the like the story was still easy to get into despite all the uh, references and in jokes in there? Yeah, I've read a lot of various versions of Spider Man, so I picked up on quite a bit of the jokes right away. <laughs> oh, especially, especially that nightmarish popsicle. I think we've all been there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I love the fact that they did a nod to Spider-Man Noir, and John Mulaney is a treat as a Spider-Ham, a.k.a. Peter Porker. Yeah, ironically, despite what I just said, I actually, my brother Gabe is a big Spider-Man fan. I remember when he was extremely young, the parents bought us a bunch of Spider-Porker uh, comics. So we were familiar with that character. Of course, we were so young that we had no idea what the context was for this character. <laughs> So we so we make these elaborate fan theories like where would this exist? Not realizing that the simple answer is it's just a funny book. It's a spinoff. Calm down. Stop thinking. So. <laughs> yeah, that and in the previous Spider-Man cartoon, Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, there was an episode where Peter turned into Spider-Ham because of a hexed hot dog given to him by Loki. <laughs> because no, oh. Loki's a dick. Right, right, and and that was the car the second cartoon series that was on. The yeah, Disney that was uh, animated by Man of Action, same people who did a uh, the Ben Ten series. Okay, and okay. I don't mean and I don't mean that God's awful reboot. I mean the good one. <laughs> right, right. Well, Not the good trilogy because uh, Alien Force and the uh, the one and the Alien Force sequel after that was actually really good. Okay, all right. I've I've barely seen. Uh, ben 10, so I'm guessing you're a much bigger fan of that stuff than I uh, am. The earlier ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one before the reboot wasn't bad, but I prefer uh, Alien Force. Okay. So, so many cartoon shows, so much fiction. It's like when, when mankind goes extinct, I, I, I think whoever takes over the Earth after us is just going to be confused by all these bizarre effigies and and gods we worship like batman and uh <laughs> charles barkley and <laughs> gone with the wind <laughs> oh dear god <laughs> uh, not to get into toilet humor but um they say that every like when people pick up their animals waste and put in plastic bags that stuff lasts for like thousands of years so I think future gener like future life forms that'll come after mankind will be wondering why what was with these humans and their obsessions with saving poop. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you say a lot of people do like to theorize that a lot of rocks are pretty much dinosaur turds. Yeah, you're, I totally forgot there is such a thing as fossilized uh, dinosaur turds of all things. So. Yep. <laughs> I forget, are they as, as big as refrigerators or more realistic uh, baseball size? <laughs> That's a good question, but at right. the same time, all it would do is make, if there's any life on, if there is any life out there other than earthlings, they're probably thinking about we're sick little monkeys. Yeah, I... <laughs> I would, yeah, I would stay away from this plant for various reasons. Oh, wait, I should probably word that because monkey could be taken out of context. Oh, we're, we're hairless primate monsters. <laughs> that's okay. We can, But I understand what you're saying. But then again, that's, that's the English language. There's so many terminology and multiple definitions for everything. But it is getting to the point where... It's, it's, I don't want to say the PC police, but it's impossible to use any terminology without somebody saying, oh, you know, that has a bad meaning, and hence you can't use the word period. So, 
it's like like what's a good example um before i even knew it was a thing i used to use like i used to refer to myself as involuntarily celibate as a gag um but then somebody told me you know that's like a hideous anti-sjw movement it's like what and then it's like and then the person questioned who i will not name andres will <laughs> 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 like 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 showed me like three hours worth of like documentaries on the whole incel movement it's like oh my clever joke got ruined by this crap so ugh. yeah assholes are why we can't have nice things exactly exactly and uh <laughs> I think the Godzilla fandom as like, we've had our watershed moments too. So it's like if Andres and Brayton was here, they would tell you about the Godzilla battle Royale debacle. So now um, getting back to Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. One thing I did notice about the movie is um, now, of course, all the in jokes towards Spider-Man lore and everything. That's totally okay. That's like, that's like Easter eggs discover way later when you delve more deep into the, into the franchise in question. It's like the recent anime SS Gridman, SSSS Gridman, whatever, anime has weird titles, that um, <laughs> that's filled with like so many in jokes and references to like countless other things that it's actually a treat to discover, but still a strong story on its own right. And I feel Spider, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse does the exact same thing. But I would also argue that it suffers from what I think the Lego movies kind of suffered from and the Emoji movie or that it's maybe the comedy is too busy. Like it's sort of like entertainment for like uh, hyper people for lack of a better term. So would you agree or disagree with that? A little of column A, a little of column B. I can see how some of the humor can be a little over the top, but at the same time, Spider-Man, outside of a few storylines here and there, some I'd rather forget <clears throat> one more day, <laughs> are normally relatively fairly lighthearted. So it mm. makes sense because the Spidey that I grew up with was an insufferable smartass. <laughs> so it works. Right. Was this the 90s Spider-Man who was always fighting clones left and right? Or was this a Spider-Man yeah, in general? Yeah, it, it, it's like almost all the adaptations, because in the 60s he had wit, in the 80s for, with uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends, he had some one-liners <laughs> and quips, and along with the 90s and the spectacular Spider-Man, it just worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, I... <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Yeah, Gabe was such a Spider-Man fan that I would like when he was growing up, I would watch the uh, the Fox Kids animated version of it with him, and I think that's where I got most of my crash course in Spider lore. And um, oh man, what, what was I going to get at? Oh yeah, I did not know that characters like uh, Penny Parker and and Spider Noir were characters before the movie. Like, how long have they been around comic book wise? Because obviously, you're the bigger Spider Man fan than I am. Mm -hmm. Penny Parker, I can't really say, because there was one small break where I couldn't keep up with comics because of, well, as a teenager, I kind of dropped from American comics for a while and mostly read manga and the occasional Archie Sonic comic and some Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. But since this is a recent character, I'd say this would be more or less because I don't really live near a comic book store anymore, so whenever I can pick up an issue or two, I do. But Spider-Man uh, Noir, that series has been around since, I think, 2009? because oh, I wow. up a, Yeah, because I that was when the Noir series came out for some Marvel comics. Two, two of the good ones were Spider-Man Noir and Punisher Noir, especially Punisher Noir. I love to meet my Punisher. I oh my god, this is like <laughs> I didn't even know there was like more noir characters outside just Spider Man. Yeah, there was a Punisher Noir series for Frank Castle, and it really fucking fit. Oh man, I didn't know. I didn't know Frank Frank Capra when he wasn't making movies was going around gunning people out of revenge. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> god damn it! <laughs> I had to. I had to. <laughs> Yeah, I know. The Punishers, it's a wonderful lie. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, dear God. <laughs> now I have a mental image of fucking Frank Castle sounding like Jimmy Stewart. Thanks for that lie. <laughs> Take that, Mr. Potter. 
Damn you! <laughs> Too bad Andres isn't in here. He'd probably pull off a really good Jimmy Stewart impersonation. Oh, okay. I, I know I know whoever's watching us right now is probably going to come in and make some impressions right now. And, uh, oh, hold on. I, I've not been looking at the... Uh, oh, we actually have several people in the chat section. Okay. Uh, light... Oh, Lydia! <laughs> I almost oh. said Lydia Cabarrus. <laughs> oh, that's Lids. Lid. Oh, hi! Hi, Lid. It's great to hear. Oh, and congratulations on um, your, your engagement. Unless I'm completely mistaking you for somebody else from MJ Knight's uh, live streams. Lid, are you there? Hello? I, I'm still oh. here. Okay, okay. Yeah, from over there, it's like, oh, no. Yeah, I'm kind of going to the YouTube thing to kind of pause the video, so there is an awkward recording, but at the same time, so I can see the chat box. Okay. So, yeah, but yeah, no, there's Lydia. Hi, Lydia. How are you doing? And okay. there's Sean Barry. Sean I'm not Barry. not sure who he is, but hello, yeah. welcome aboard, and yes, I have to agree, the animation was gorgeous. Yes, indeed. So, and... Lydia says, hi there, can't stick around, you guys have fun, hi, when, have to sleep, you have all a good night. Well, yeah, well, as you can tell from the title of this live stream, it's not so late night with Nshoma, so. <laughs> uh, okay, and Sean Barry, hi, Sean Barry, it's good to see you. Um, Sean Barry is somebody who knows um, us and Kaiju Noir on uh, Facebook, so he's sort of a mega fan in that regard. So, um, so now... Uh, Peter B. Parker, the less successful uh, alternate version of Peter Parker, he's a movie original character, correct? Or has it been a Peter B. Parker in the uh, comics proper? I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure there was an alternate version because for a while there was a time where Peter and MJ weren't together. Hmm. A lot oh. of people want it to happen again, but there's a lot of people that have their doubts. And because of One More Day, it made me extremely salty because it kind of killed one of my favorite extensions of the Spider-Verse, which was Spider-Girl. Because uh, when Peter Parker and MJ were married, they had a daughter by the name of Mayday Parker, and she became Spider-Girl. She had her own comic book series, didn't she? Yeah, it was really good. It was well animated. She had her father's wit. She had her father's skills. And at the same time, the villains were slightly different in terms of her rogues gallery. Like one of the more, like her hobgoblin was funny face. And there was one character by the name of the Buzz, which she didn't know if she could trust him as an ally or as an enemy. Mm, that much I vaguely remember. Oh, uh, yes, the Buzz, the famous comic book villain who was actually J. Jonas Jameson in a giant bee costume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, not that Buzz. It, oh, it was okay. a fellow student from May School. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I now to. I do have a hilarious mental image. <laughs> it would explain why he hates spiders so much. <laughs> because he identifies as a beacon. Right. <laughs> also, there's a pun. You know, he's in the he's a newsman. He's all about the buzz, huh? Huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, oh God, I love puns, but I don't know why <laughs> they're so horrible at the same time. So, oh my goodness, puns are fun, but they're such punishing punishment. They're cheesier than the cheese king of Wisconsin. <laughs> And he's the cheesiest of them all. So, all right. Um, and he would have met his untimely demise if it weren't for interference from a mysterious leather jacket wearing weirdo. <laughs> I'm so glad you're so optimistic about Glue because Brayton was like berating me last night about like, you're so obsessed with these damn characters. And he's right. So <laughs> They're fun and they are your creation. And when you mm -hmm. create something and you grow to love it, you do kind of become a little obsessed. Yeah, yeah. And so far, it's the, of all the weird, crazy ideas and characters I've created, it's the one that's out in the public ether the most right now, thanks to the Waffle Man and various references on uh, Kaiju Noir's little channel. So, <laughs> wait, let me take that back. This is the little channel. Kaiju Noir is actually getting the views. <laughs> so, 
Oh, and look, we got a third person, Win the Rogue. <laughs> Any relation? Let's see. Oh, no, that was just me doing a little cat smiley to okay. the chat. Okay, I, I kind of figured that. Yeah, I wanted to make sure if I was lagging on that end or if that was just all the uh, chat we had at the moment, just to make mm -hmm. sure that I wasn't ignoring anyone. Right, right. Yeah, no, so far we just have Sean Barry, Lydia, she's already uh, disappeared on us. We got more power. Yeah, she super. probably has work super early in the morning. Okay. Uh, if you're going to work in two hours, I mean, are you doing like. Uh, no, no, I'm not going in two hours. Oh, I okay. have. I work in the morning because my cafe is only open for uh, breakfast and lunch, so I'm okay. good. Okay. I don't okay. have to go in until ten o'clock, so okay. we can we can stream. And if we get anyone else, like the usual gang of uh, Andres or <laughs> yeah. of uh, Brayton, then it'll be a fun night. <laughs> yes, I hope so too. Okay, cool, cool. So, yeah, and so far, I, um, I've gotten several replies from some of my other guest stars. Uh, Nick Nolte says no. Um, <laughs> Queen Latifah says no way, Jose. Um, Jennifer Lo <laughs> Lopez says you gave Geely a bad review, and uh, Christopher Walken says I'm weird, Raph. I'm not that weird. So yeah, we will not be getting those four celebrities on tonight's live stream. Oh so, shit. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, you said a bad word. <laughs> so, uh, okay, but yeah, no, I I gotta admit, I think my favorite character from um, uh, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse was Peter B. Parker because it's such, like, like, like I like Spider Man, but like growing up and knowing how s sad the character's life is, I'm surprised he didn't end up like Peter B. Parker officially in the comics. And to see that in fruition is like, yeah, I, I think that would be a more realistic take on Spider Man. So, although, and and also it was just a hilarious character too. Like it's, I never like I never thought you'd see a mainstream superhero movie where a superhero is wearing like sweatpants to battle. <laughs> Uh, well, when you eat all that pizza, it's not exactly easy to fit into your full-blown spider costume. Gotta, <laughs> gotta hide the spare tire somehow. Yes, I should know. <laughs> <laughs> my days my days as Super Raff was a failure. <laughs> I think I remember that. I, yeah. I think the night you hung up your cape for good, you were kind of... <laughs> You were kind of bawling to me on the phone, uh, drowning your sorrows in Mountain Dew. Exactly. And I blame Mountain Dew's free product placement for my eventual ruin. So. <laughs> to uh, the Dew Kids, brought to you yeah. by Mountain Dew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, if, I, if I could cut to random footage, I'd just be like Angry Joe drinking Mountain Dew and chips. And it's like, this game's good. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, God. don't sell yourself that short. You are not angry, Joe. I no, assure no. you. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I I don't have that many leather jackets in my uh, repertoire, but it's, um, and I don't care you bitch about every single video game in the roster. Th that in is, industry. Yeah, when he gets hyperbolic, he does get incredibly hyperbolic. <laughs> so, thankfully, right. I'm nothing like that. So. Yeah, I understand. Some games have their flaws. And that the gaming industry can be a bit better in terms of mm -hmm. decisions, but it's not that terrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Get a puppy. It'll make you happy. <laughs> or a kitty. Raph has right. many kitties he is willing to give away. Yes, I have too many cats. Take them, please. <laughs> it's, it's like so far you've only seen pictures, I think, of the professor and... Um, and princessa or princess. I prefer to call her princess. My parents call her. But yeah, we have seven cats. There's Archer, Ra no, Radar, the one I can't name who looks just like Radar, Princess, Professor. They're practically twins, although Princess is obviously female and Professor is male. <laughs> um, then there's Uno and uh, Fluffy. They, they're also twins, twin sisters, although Fluffy, true, her name is Fluffy. Uh, and then there's the constantly name-changing black one, who's currently called Bagari, or or whatever the panther in Jungle Book is called. Oh, Bagheera. Bagheera, thank you, thank you. But yeah, he was originally Noche, and then he was No Cheese, and then he was Blackjack too, the Reckoning, and and now and now he's um, oh darn, it, I totally forgot. But Bagheera, thank, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like he's going through a bit of an identity identity crisis there. 
Oh, no, 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 no. I kind of slipped up on my own words. That's okay. No, it's the parents not deciding the name. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had a few situations with cats along those lines and one of my dogs back in the past. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. So, oh, with the names constantly changing and nobody ch just sticking or, in. Yeah, either the name's constantly changing or just a sudden change from its original name. Right, right. It's like, well, here, the, the funny thing about the professor was for the longest time, I think we called him, what did we call him? I don't know. We never really had a good name for him. Um, and I, I, I constantly made the joke to everybody. How about we call him Professor Twilliger Schmitz McGee, the 17th Esquire. And it's like, no, Raph, that's not going to work. And I kept hounding it. I want to call him Professor Twilliger Schmitz McGee, the 17th Esquire. And eventually say, okay, fine. He's the professor. So, <laughs> and, and he is like the most calm and sweetest of the cats. So unfortunately it's uh, true to her name. Princess is the one who's kind of taken over becoming the number one cat in the house. <laughs> but yeah, we we got seven cats, <laughs> and it was so sad too because two the the two garage cats, uh, Radar and other guy, um, they were supposed to go upstate to the Shasta Mountains where the uh, the uh, to a friend's house because it's upstate, it's in a woodland area, and the plan was they were going to live live there permanently and be like the local mousers if possible, especially since they were the two most. Um, Ruggish of the cats, or um, I don't want to say feral, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And, and But unfortunately, the car fire happened, which was that huge fire upstate, and it totally destroyed the, our friendly questions house. And it was a beautiful house, too. So we got stuck with the two cats. And it was probably for the better, because had he taken them sooner, who knows what would have happened to those poor cats up there. Oh, yeah. it's That's tragic of, enough as is. That would have been heartbreaking. I know. I know. To find out that it, it's like I, there's there's this aunt we're discommunicated from for various reasons, but she, whenever she decided to take one of her pet dogs uh, into another state, it would always end in some horrific tragedy for the poor animals in question. So I think in this case we dodged a bullet, thankfully. But that's like the worst thing imaginable. You, it's like you give away a dog, you, a dog or cat you raised, and then it's like you find out they died because of somebody else's instant neglig negligence. Oh, I said mm -hmm. that right. So, <laughs> welcome to Enshoma's live stream. Happy, happy time all around. <laughs> Next up, my political views about everything. It sucks. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, <clears throat> have you seen Aquaman yet? Uh, no. I've heard mixed things, but my coworkers uh, seem to like it. Okay. They say that it's a fun watch, and at the same time, they do tend to find uh, Jason Momoa visually appealing. I will <laughs> agree, but at the same time, I kind of wanted to see Into the Spider-Verse, so one of my other co-workers that I did see it with, and I kind of flipped a coin and like, okay, well, heads, we'll, we'll see uh, Aquaman, tails, we'll see Into the Spider-Verse. And if we can't decide on either for some reason at the last moment, we'll go see Bumblebee. Either way, we'll probably see a potentially fun movie. Yeah. I, I do eventually want to see Bumblebee, though I'll probably have to wait till it's on Blu ray. You but know, I... <laughs> but oh, yeah. um, we ended up seeing Into the Spider Verse and just kind of hanging out at Barnes and Noble after. Mm -hmm. So it was a fun time to be had. Excellent, excellent. And I'm going to revisit Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and if possible, I'm with my uh, discounts. I'm, forgive me, I'm going to go see Bumblebee and Aquaman too. So, cool. so I'm going to, yeah, yeah. But we'll see what happens if if I'm like dead tired at 5 a.m., which is not how long this live stream is going to last. Um, or is it? Oh dear Lord. It, yes. <laughs> It's like, it's like cut to eight hours later. Welcome! I'm almost done! <laughs> I'm dying calorie now! I'm so alone! <laughs> oh god, I'd probably be passed out on my desk annoying my luck, probably <laughs> drooling and snoring. 
Right. <laughs> and then we cut the break and he was asleep in his bed, dressed up as like Vincent Price and like, you know, his cloak and everything. And then we cut the Andres and he's just like spinning in a time warp for no reason whatsoever. It's like, in show my house. <laughs> Can I ask you the time warp again? <laughs> to quote Simon Pegg, I hate the time warp. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the time warp? No! <laughs> okay, but it's so funny that um, in Aquaman, one of the main things I want to see, see because, you know, I'm in showman, I'm desperate in that regard, is uh, the giant monsters are in the movie. I know that there's mosasaurs and giant crabs and all that. And of all things, Julie Andrews voicing a gigantic Godzilla-like sea monster. And so, Ooh. Yeah, so I'm, but I'm wondering how much of her, of her real voice they keep and how much they kind of just cover it up in like digital effects and whatnot, so. Oh, we'll have to see. She still has the chops to do vocal work mm -hmm. in terms of voicing. Mm -hmm. It's just singing she can't really do anymore due to a botched uh, surgery. Oh, it, it wasn't plastic surgery related nonsense. No, it's throat surgery. Oh, poor thing. And yeah, because when you're in the voice acting industry or when you're in Broadway, on occasion, if as you get older, you'll have to at least do like once or twice have to go through a throat surgery to kind of treat things and make sure your voice works up and proper and make sure you don't develop, haven't developed any benign tumors there. Oh, We're which is why some you hear some voice actors sometimes sound a little different aside from age right where right. if it's a success they normally don't miss a beat take uh, rob paulson for an example except his was uh he was fighting throat cancer and fortunately everything came out a-okay this is what i get for being such an ignorant ignorant little bubble dwelling snob i had no idea rob paulson had throat cancer yeah, it was removed a couple years back, but he's still kicking ass behind the mic, be mm -hmm. it in cartoons or uh, on the Alpha podcast for the Nerdist. Right, right. Yeah, oh my, more power to him. He sounds great. He can still sing quite beautifully, like like his like brief little appearance in um, all that terrible Batman and Harley Quinn movie. So mm. yeah, yeah and he has a. And he was still great, and he's great as Donatello in a TMNT 2012. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, wow, that guy still works. <laughs> yeah, and in the crossover series, they did a nod to that by uh, having him and his previous role in TMNT, Raphael, talk to one another, the uh, 87 and 2012 crossover. And I was delighted. God, what I would give to meet that man someday, oh, or my. work with him. Yeah, well, here, here's a funny thing. Like, there's this one character in Glue I have called Johnny Laserfin, who is the accountant slash cyborg of Glue. And if if and Rob Paulson is my number one choice for him to do the voice because he can do that. You know, when he like you've you've heard enough of talking to him, where he goes like, "Listen, babe, I got a plan here, and you need to shut up and listen." So. Oh yeah, I've, yeah. Heard, I've yeah. heard his I've heard his mob voices many a time. Yeah, yeah, no, I I think he would do a great job as Johnny Laserfin, especially the moments where Johnny Laserfin goes from like level eleven confidence to like level zero because Johnny Laserfin has a lot of confidence issues that he hides with his uh, bluster. So yeah, he'll he'd probably go from Steelbeak to Carl Weezer. Yeah, <laughs> and it would be perfect. Right, right. So, although although I don't I don't want to get too much of delusions of grandeur because for for all I know my story will end with me after this live stream going outside to get a breath of fresh air and I'm I'm murdered by an unseen assassin. I got wood now. Okay. What? <laughs> no. I knew you would be my ruin win. So. Hey, I just had to knock on wood to so. You you don't jinx yourself. Oh yeah, thank you. You don't thank need you. to. You don't need to get up, grab the morning paper, um, only to get taken out by dirty corruption. Right. <laughs> and dirty corruption is like on the world's biggest tricycle. It's like, hey there, <laughs> now to pedal away quickly. 
I can't. Or who knows? Oh. Maybe I could stop time on stealth and drop kick him in the face, <laughs> and pretty much quote Metalocalypse the whole time. That's my bread and butter. You're fucking with. <laughs> yeah, I remember that character. He was cool. So, uh, they're, 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 who was it? Their their agent. Yeah, it was their okay. agent. Yeah, and it's like. Like, that's the thing about metal. Like one of the recurring gags in Metal Apocalypse, it wasn't exactly my cup of tea. Although I did enjoy the music quite a bit, and the kind of almost like Spinal Tap meets uh, X Files type insanity the overall plot had. Mm -hmm. um, but I love the gag that characters would come back from the grave a lot sooner than you would expect, either as like deformed survivors or cyborgs, or in the case of the agent, like you know, I I've, I've just been hiding in the shadows. <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh man, it's. But I haven't really like. I know everyone keeps telling me you gotta watch Rick and Morty. You gotta watch Rick and Morty. And after the the great McDonald's massacre of uh, two years ago, I'm not exactly that willing to revisit Mick, uh, Rick and Morty. I almost called it Mick and Morty. Um, but yeah, I have not. I've not been on top of my um, Adult Swim network watch in a while now. So, uh, do you keep on top of that network or no? Um, I don't have cable, but. When I do have, when I do watch some of the reruns on Hulu, I gotta say it's it's not bad. Yeah. It may have a kooky fan base, but it's it's not terrible. It's okay. probably not the it's probably not the greatest thing since sliced bread, but it's not terrible either. It's more or less, huh? Okay, this is <laughs> this is a good watch. Right, right, right. And I'm still a fan of the Venture Brothers whenever they release a season once every 40, 40 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, you know, I, I would love to show, like, like screen share right now, but I'm afraid it's going to affect the audio on my end. Although maybe maybe I can do a little test just to see if it if it works this time. Uh, all right. Let me un okay. uh, scroll down. Okay. Oh, wait. Well, yeah. Hold on. Settings, advanced bandwidth usage, self-destruct mode, free beer. These buttons are still complicated. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. If I turn the camera off, I know the audio is going to be affected. Um, uh, let me just do a little experiment. But first, let me save the work I'm doing on this uh, skeleton zombie here, or skeleton ghost. Whatever. It's looking great so far, regardless. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, thank you. So yeah, I watched this. I'll talk about House in a little bit, but um, yeah, I saw this movie not a couple of nights ago when I was working on the title card, and it's a really fun movie. It's it's no Evil Dead Two or Ghostbusters, but it feels like it could exist in that in that kind of bizarre horror universe. So, and the monster effects are just really a lot of fun, and I I don't want to say they're amazing, but they're they're, they're good. It makes you miss the '80s and all the practical effects they had going on then. Oh yeah. Uh, now today, like yeah. Now like today, the whole bleeding effect being made with, made with corn syrup and red food coloring. Oh yeah, as opposed to the day where it's like you you can't even get you can't even hire like a simple cat to do a scene without it being like horribly CGI. Cough, cough. A dog's way home. Cough. <laughs> oh, God. I keep seeing the trailer for that. It's like. Okay, this looks heartwarming, but at the same time, I have a feeling that it is going to pull that. Because on one, as I said, on one hand, it's cute, but at the same time, it's a fucking rehash of Homeward Bound. Let's be real here. <laughs> minus the sassy cat. <laughs> minus the sassy cat and minus Michael J. Fox. So yeah. two minuses. Yeah, and, and also, Homeward Bound is a movie I would like to watch, revisit again. I remember watching that a lot as a kid, but I haven't seen it in ages. But that's when talking animal movies were good. <laughs> oh, yeah, as, that was so good. And it hit you in the heartstrings every it, step of the way. Exactly. Unlike Milo and Otis, we can watch it without feeling guilt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Don't harm me. Sorry, everybody. That's a really dark joke. If you're saying on late night with Enshoma. <laughs> so, now on to my... Unless you, unless you love crying, I'd say stay away from Milo and Otis. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, Japan. <laughs> we love you, and then you do something like that on us. Why? So, okay. 
Oh my goodness, I got a lot to do tonight. That's okay, that's okay. I'm not the best at multitasking, but I think I will get everything done and maybe cheat it a little bit at the end, but we'll see. I want to give <laughs> I want to give uh, Brendan something really nice. So that's how it looks with the title. And uh, that's, oh, and uh, there's a little hidden George Went there. <laughs> so, <laughs> as you can see. Because <laughs> he's in the movie. So yeah, I was uh, like, like, and I regret not drawing like George Went just in the middle of the ghost. Like, you know, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so instead I just snuck in George Went there in the little portrait picture. So, and of course the movie stars the actor from The Greatest American Hero. So that's why uh, Brendan is wearing The Greatest American Hero outfit. <laughs> so, and of course the box that says Hantai Films Review and Turkish Nonsense. And I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to play the gag and just like repost hentai films on all the other boxes. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Well, he does review some of that sometimes. So, okay. Uh, okay. So I'm going to do a little experiment for a little bit. I'm going to turn off the web camera and see if I can do this, the, the share screen and if it affects my audio and whoever is still in the, Oh, we got some more people first. Uh, we got Arkham Knight writer. Um, no, no, uh, which is what happens when Common Rider, Batman, and um, Knight Rider merge into a singular superhero. It's a terrifying looking thing. Um, oh dear. Yes. I'm reading the text now. Right, right. He says, what's up or sup, I guess. Oh, Arkham Knight Rider, yeah. But the Esfose, uh, I can't read that out loud. Oh yeah, yeah. How about yeah? How about we get rid of this guy? It's like just my yeah. yeah Thank just, you. Yeah, I would like to vote my 195 followers for being really good people. Uh, I don't know who this S. I'm not even gonna say his name. I'm even gonna give him the. But yeah, um, thanks for ruining that. And I think we are not going to. <laughs> We are not going to, uh, we're going to ignore that individual because, you know, bullies are like vampires. If you give them what they want, they keep coming back for it. So, Or in this case, just uh, trolls trying to be edgy. Yeah, but but I, I don't know. It's like trolls are idiots. It's yeah, like, e either way, if you ignore them, they eventually get bored and go away. Yeah, yeah. And if, if it's, it's like they... And then one more thing, they use the internet because they know in real life they can dish out, but they can't take it. So it's like if he met me in real life, it would, eh, eh, probably nothing would happen to us. But if they had by chance pissed off the wrong person, it would have been probably been like the end of this one episode of Cromarty High, where one of, one of the uh, characters would frequently visit this forum and this mm -hmm. troll would constantly egg and antagonize him and he would keep replying despite the advice of don't feed the troll. Mm. Uh, he's walking home. At the end of the episode, he's like walking to school, annoyed as hell. This little kind of wormy looking dude seems pleased with himself and just gets punched, ironically punched in the face by that character. <laughs> oh, unaware my that that was the troll that was giving him shit. <laughs> I remember that. That was a that was Cromarty High was a great show. It's uh, like yeah, yeah. It's I usually don't like anime comedies because they have like a terrible repetition to them. If you've seen one sketch from an episode, you pretty much know how the rest of the series is going to play. Yeah, but, it depends. If it's a slice of life, it's good. If it's more. Trying to go with a sitcom formula, then it's hit or miss. Yeah, yeah, but no, that Cromarty High, it's like they would revisit a lot of gags and story beats, but then every once in a while they throw a curveball at you, and that was a gr that was a great gag, just like. <laughs> and I did love that they had a character that looked like Freddie Mercury. <laughs> that's what. That's... And he never spoke. Yeah, exactly. It's like, is he even a high school student? What do we call him? I think we'll call him Freddie. Pretty, huh? <laughs> oh, and of, and of course, you, yeah, there's the, there's the gorilla and the robot. It's like Mechazawa. <laughs> God, and it, it it didn't, and it helped that ADV Films did such a fantastic job dubbing it. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm glad they were at, they were, they were actually compliment the dub was complimentary to the original comedy as opposed to like them going off and doing their own wacky thing. So which. 
sometimes work, but it's it's I, it does not <laughs> most of the time. So hold on, I just gotta finish off this. Uh, by the way, this uh, scary uh, uh, Vietnam vet ghost right here is uh, his name is Big Ben. So played played by uh, Richard Mall, the famous the famous voice actor and uh, comedian and character actor. So I hope he's okay. I've never heard from Richard Mall in ages. So, uh, you, <laughs> to everybody out there who's like, who the hell is Richard Mall? Well, I know you're all the world's biggest Night Court fan, so he was uh, the, the bailiff in that show. Uh, but he's probably better known as Two Face in Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, that yeah. was he was awesome. Yeah, yeah, and and he and he would show up in a lot of '80s movies. He, uh, Usually playing uh, villains in horror movies, but that's the great thing about Richard Mall. He could he could go from like play a menacing character to like a lovable goof and like in a heartbeat. Oh but yeah, of course, yeah. Of course, me and my brothers we grew up with uh, Night Court, so whenever we saw Richard Mall playing a villain in a horror movie like The Dungeon Master or um, Night Train to Infinity or whatever it was called, it's like, well, what, what, why is our big lovable bald goofball being scary? <laughs> so. So, but yeah, Richard Mall's awesome. And and in fact, if you read, uh, if you see the little dog tag on uh, Big Ben here, it says Richard Mall rules. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, all right. And uh, and uh, and just let everyone who's uh, watching this know uh, if you have any questions in the comments, go ahead and ask. Of course, we will ignore any and all dumb questions. And I think you know who you are. <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, it's like I do want to thank them. I okay. I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm getting all weird right now. Uh, that's okay. It's uh, a late night stream. Right. It right. was kind of impromptu. <laughs> that's what I wrote. <laughs> so. There's no script here, folks. So bear with us if we ramble. Right. Right. Rambling. 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 Ramble. Ramble. <laughs> so. Okay, I'm going to turn off this. I'm going to turn off the camera for a little bit and see if the new audio setup I got going will assist. But we'll be returning to the main camera in a little bit. All right, I'll uh, bring it up to see if it works. Uh, okay. If that is, if Navi doesn't sit on my keyboard and uh, press random buttons with his butt because he decided to sit on my desk and scratch at his ear. Oh, cats, aren't they wonderful? You're trying to do all this, like, sensitive computer equipment work, and it's like, meow, yeah, I'm going to walk on your keys. <laughs> Keyboards, not your keys. Whatever. <laughs> eh, same so, spiel. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you can, yeah, if you or anybody in the comment section uh, can let me know if my voice is still the same or if it suddenly gets all weird, let me know. All right, go for it. Okay. Uh, um, uh, hello, everybody out there in internet land. How you doing? It seems uh, the same so far. You're good. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, yeah. No, it's. Yeah, you're right. Also, I like a fool. I just I just drank a bunch of uh, pink lemonade, so it might affect my uh, <laughs> my mental capacities. <laughs> I will. I'm going to say this out loud. Um, I do have a bit of a sugar problem, so I shouldn't have had pink lemonade. Oh well, it's but a deep breath, and if I think clearly, everything's going to be okay. Oh, a squirrel! Yay! Oh <laughs> dear out, lord! I jump out the window to my doom. Whee! God damn it! Get back here! <laughs> the channel's yours in the wind. <laughs> I, I, I like fall into the ocean like the main villain in the uh, Ninja Turtles three. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> and they never saw me again. So, default. Uh, so far, it says the default is the microphone on the webcam. While HD. Oh wait a minute! I just have to change the the settings here. Okay, I'm gonna go switch to um, communications microphone. I wonder how that's gonna work. Default speakers. What the heck? Default. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Learn the computer with Inshoma live. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are these things called mice? Oh god. Okay. This isn't gonna turn into a Seinfeld preference, is it? No. <laughs> oh thank God. 
Right, right. I think we've already had the uh, the, the the failed Kramer impression in the chat not too long ago. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Although, although just just the, I'm that's like I said, I'm, I'm going to do my best to ignore that guy. But um, I will say this: don't think you're special, pal. If it was up to the very people you support, they would take away your voting rights too in a heartbeat. So don't think you're special. <laughs> so we're all peasants in the eye of the um, uh, the hierarchy. So. Or the bourgeoisie. So, when how's your communist party going on? <laughs> Coming along. Wait, I have a communist party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, comrade. We're meeting in secret. So, but, um, but, but communism's bad. Capitalism's <laughs> good. Didn't you hear Frankie the parrot? No, not Frankie the parrot. He's the worst of the proletariat. <laughs> What do you have a man substitute sidekick till he gets right. a better one? <laughs> right, right. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. By the we got to do a podcast where we're just talking about that Waffle Man special. That way it gets a little more exposure and we can bring you along and share some of the deleted scenes and the the really terrible audio impressions and get get like you and Andres's uh, live reaction to just laugh at me and Brayton. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. And I definitely hope sometime by then I can find a way to soundproof this apartment so my audio quality sounds a little better oh your your audio your audio quality is is great I don't, I don't yeah don't worry about it you sound a lot better than I probably do and <laughs> uh, to Sean Barry or Arkham if I sound weird in the live stream please let me know I'm checking the comments right now so oh <laughs> I, was, I was gonna make like a fake like oh no we got another commenter. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, so far it was just uh, Arkham Knight Riders up. Mm -hmm. So that or it's an acronym for the CU Parable. CU, never mind. Just never mind. <laughs> okay, so I'm on sh I'm on share screen right now, and uh, let me. I want to show you some pictures of the cats in question. Alrighty. All right. Another reason, I, uh, at first I was going to do this as a video, Ow. just, oh, are you okay? The cat got you? Yeah, I'm petting him, and he was a jerk and pawed me in the face with his claws out. Oh, what a mean cat. Yes, he, he, he's, a, he's a little poophead. I love him to bits, but he's a turd. Yeah. It's like, like, a princess is very sweet, but um, she'll do that thing where she wants, wants you up. She will... Push her face into your sleeping. She will put her face right into your face to try to wake you up. <laughs> so it's like, what's going on? I can't breathe. <laughs> oh, it's a lot. She's a lot nicer than Navi is. He smacks me in the face at five in the morning, meows oh, as if to go feed me, human. I require oh. gushy food now. I, I can't I, do. I can't do as good as good of a Navi impersonation as MJ can. So one of these days, I'll uh, have to. Have Right. We'll have to see if he can never do a voiceover on Sunday Night Live for you. Right. <laughs> Hello there, human. I demand sustenance. I'm a cat. Meow. <laughs> so, that works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is the this is a slight preview of the house title card I'm working on right now. I'm doing the gradients, but this is just the basic color. So complete with the George Went gag because that's what matters. George Went all the time. I just realized I got to darken in um, uh, Brendan Tenault's face. It's a little too light colored. So, um, but no, I wanted to show you pictures of the cats. So let's go to Raf's art for January. Okay. Do, 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 do. And I'm guessing the screen share is a. Uh, yeah, it's right working now. just fine. I can see your cursor moving around. Okay, and so far I sound okay, right, everybody? Yeah, your audio pretty much sounds the same. Okay, okay. So, uh, no, I don't want to go live stream. I don't want the infinity effect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here is me, <laughs> and this is a professor. And he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's a sweetheart. Unfortunately, he prefers to stay outside, although he has attempted to try to sleep inside. And I would just wake up and like like on the couch, and it's like, who's this gentleman just looking at me? Oh, it's a professor. Mm, that's so, weird. I like I see your uh, house card cover still, and not the professor. Oh, that's weird. House. Mm. Oh, there's probably delay in the live stream. Okay, so yeah, there's yeah. probably some slight lag. 
Yeah, yeah. Better yet, how about I also send the pictures to you through Skype? That so works. That way, yeah. So that we're not, we're like, <laughs> wait 30 seconds, Win. It's so efficient. Okay, hold on. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Yeah, the pictures are coming up. Okay. Aw, he's a cutie. Yeah, yeah, and he's um, like I, 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 you know, did I, did I share the story of how we got seven cats last time? Or I believe so. It was uh, when you were showing me your artwork when uh, we grabbed sushi that one day. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. So, but for the rest of the of everybody in TV Land <laughs> or Internet Internet Central, so um, basically, there's a lot of stray cats in my neighborhood. And one of them had seven kittens in our backyard. And to make sure they didn't reproduce and multiply, we captured the seven kittens. Uh, we kept them um, until we were able to get them all fixed. We tried our best to get the mother to come in and visit them. We, we made access into the little cage area. We didn't keep them in cages, but we, we blocked off the whole side garden to our house and made it into like a large cat cage, about like 20 feet long. So it, wor it worked out quite well in that regard. But... Um, yeah, after we got them fixed, I uh, know we, we let them uh, stay in for like two days because that's what the doctor recommended. And we found some really good deals, too. We were able to get all seven cats um, spayed and neutered for only $17, so it worked out great. Oh, nice. Yeah, but you have to call like the right organizations and let them know ahead of time and all this. So, But yeah, after that, uh, that's why, as you can see, the professor kind of has a little, uh, uh, his ear is a little cut in half because they do that. So that dog catchers and animal control people know the cat's been fixed and he's allowed to stay free. So, um, unfortunately, we were really hoping to try to find people to actually take most of the cats, but nobody has so far. So we're, we got seven outdoor cats. Uh, so far, they're doing okay, and we do feed them, but we got seven cats. So it's like, I feel like this is like the fall before Jurassic Park. <laughs> Everything's going to go well, and then one day the, the, the cats get loose and all hell's going to break loose. But yeah, they are a noisy committee when they want to get fed around three three o'clock. All seven of them will gather in the backyard. Or if I have my fr if I have my front door open, they just come in one at a time and just do like a little sound of music chorus, live on Trump chorus, like, you know, meow, meow. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Avita say, we are hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that's the professor. That's some big, scary, uh, hairless orangutan holding him. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, let's see. I'm going to send you, um, all right. Hold on. Let me send you some pictures first so we're on the same page. So, do 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 there's got to be some pictures of Princess. Where's Princess? You might have seen these on Facebook. Oh, wait, no. Might have I don't have Facebook. Right, right. Okay, these are... Hold on. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. There we go. All right, and these are pictures of Princess. I'm going to... Those are just a couple of pictures I sent you. I'm going to look at all the pictures on live share right now. So, ah, she's cute. yeah. I know she's she's utterly adorable, and she's she was the runt of the litter. And like they say, sometimes the runts are also the most uh, intelligent and sneaky. So while all the other cats were still in the giant play cage next door, the side garden. She, I don't know why, we almost called her Houdini because she kept escaping no matter how, how, how much we, we, we covered up the front doors. And she would always come inside the house and she ended up becoming a house cat. Like we tried getting the other cats to come inside, but they can only stay in for like a half an hour before wanting to go back outside. But thankfully they have, they have dad's garage area, which is a very nice garage and the laundry room to sleep in. So they're not completely out in the elements. So. But yeah, that's uh, that's Princess, and she is a uh, she's a sweetheart. So <laughs> yeah, she's the only one who doesn't bite you after a while. I think she she demands um, she she demands uh, petting. She's one of those cats who will use her head like like a like a forklift and like get your hand up so she can be petted. <laughs> so if did that make any sense, or did I just say something really weird? <laughs> Oh, no, that makes sense. Okay, all right. It's like it's like the two people in the live stream is like, okay, and she almost lost it. Going to bed now. 
<laughs> yeah. But as you can see, that's, uh, yeah, Princess, yeah, she likes to sit. She's not inside right now, and there's a good reason why. We had a whole week's worth of rain happen, and the cats were stuck inside the house. A lot of them decided to stay in the laundry room, some went into my room. Um, but yeah, they, they went a little stir crazy, and I think the cats are now more outside this week than they were last week. So, but yeah, there's a picture of me with Princess, and this is, yeah, she likes to be held that way. So, she's funny too. Cats are fun. <laughs> uh, so now is Navi? Did you get her when she was a? He, I mean, did you get him when he was young or was? Yeah, he kind when of... he was a kitten, he was about a couple months old when I got him. Okay. Right, My yeah, no. <laughs> sister-in-law had found this cat. Turned out to be her neighbor's cat, and mm -hmm. the cat was very pregnant and gave birth to a litter of three kittens. One cat she kept. I kept the other, and my sister took uh, the black and white one of of the three, where the other two orange tabbies. They mm. were originally nicknamed Cracker and Cheese. <laughs> and not wanting my cat to be named after a snack, a friend of mine suggested name the cat Navi, because... Navi would meow a lot ever since I first got him. Even when he got cuddles, even when he got fed. He was a very, very vocal kitten. Mm. And um, I'm all, you know what? That's actually not a bad idea. And it's probably better a better name than Cheese. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. It feels like a disservice when somebody names their animal after food. <laughs> so, especially considering that, you know, the relationship human beings usually have with animals. <laughs> so. Yeah, the orange tabbies were Cracker and Cheese. Uh, my sister-in-law's cat is still named Crackers. Mm -hmm. And the black one was originally called Little Satan. And now, and for a while he was called Bad Kitty and now he's called Professor. Like your cat. <laughs> oh my goodness, they should meet and write a paper together. <laughs> so, it's like you two have written the the great American novel. Meow 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 meow. meow. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not a novel. It's a it's a parody song. <laughs> so, oh, and Anna, uh, even though I know Brighton isn't going to be here for a little while, I thought I'd share these. Once we get um. The, our Mystery Science Theater fan episode up, we're going to start a uh, podcast series called Unrift, where we just talk about uh, Mystery Science Theater, the movies that were featured on Mystery Science Theater without the Mystery Science Theater uh, commentary. And uh, the, these are sort of like Photoshop images we did uh, based on the first episode of the 1957 Mexican Santa Claus movie. <laughs> so, and Lord knows there were many cheesy movies involving Santa Claus, like <laughs> when he had a face-off against the Martians. <laughs> <laughs> and drop! Should... Yeah, drop! Oh, why are you the laziest man on Mars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, we decided to talk about the Mexican version of Santa Claus. Mexican version of Santa Claus, huh? Yes, yes. It was It was a movie made... Like I don't, you've probably seen that Mystery Science Theater version uh, movie, but it was like a Santa Claus movie made in like I think fifty six or fifty seven, and it it was from the same people who did El Santo and on like um that those weird red right red Riding Hood movies, and I'll um have, I'll have to rewatch just to double check because a mm -hmm. lot of the cheesy movies I remember were of different versions like i know there was like the korean equivalent to godzilla there was a uh, <laughs> i remember there was hercules versus the moon men where joel uh crow and servo were singing the pants song the greatness of pants because that hercules was only in what looked like borderline chonies oh <laughs> yes he was he was a he was a version of Hercules that only wore a fucking loincloth. Uh huh. I just realized something. I forgot to turn the share screen on, so our audience is still looking at the, what the webcam is seeing. Hmm. 
I'm an idiot. Okay, so now starts the real experiment where we see if the audio gets 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 affected by me going to the share screen. <laughs> to be fair, the format <coughs> the Google Hangouts is a little different than Skype. Yeah, that is true. So okay, here I go. Share screen. And if I cough a bit, chances are uh, my beverage went down the wrong pipe. Yeah, I see it. You're uh, moving everything around. I see everything working. Right, right. I'm in infinity mode. <laughs> and it looks like an infinite tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Into the digital world. Okay. Cool. Does this mean I get a Digivice? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So. Yes, I get to be a Digi Destined. Right. <laughs> Well, that's that's terrible. A lot, of the, a lot of the options I can do are not not available. Oh darn, this is weird. Okay, there we go. Might be able to do something like this. Okay, well, I'm and now I see the little picture files of your different kitties, your drawings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me let me reshare these again for the audience or or the one guy watching right now. So and a man named Cone Wizard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the cone wizard. Yeah. So, like, a quick reintroduction. This is me and the professor, ladies and gentlemen. So, he's okay. And these pictures were taken by Andres Perez, so no idea if he'll join us. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> uh, this, this is for the upcoming Mystery Science Theater fan episode that uh, me and Brayton are doing. This is a uh, uh, Crow's uh, Photoshop of uh, Estelle Getty as a giant uh, monster. You know, the old lady from the Golden Girls. <laughs> Yeah, I had a feeling. I'm like, wait, it's, I was going to say, wait, is that Dorothy's mother? <laughs> Dorothy, Dorothy, I must destroy Oz to save you. Not <laughs> that Dorothy, B. Arthur, Dorothy. Oh, B. Arthur, yes, yes. <laughs> no, I was more a fan of Blanche and Rose. Yeah, <laughs> everyone likes Blanche. <laughs> and Blanche loves everyone. And more yeah. ways than one. <laughs> I Someone needs to get that girl some uh, lifetime supply of Gatorade. Her thirst right. is endless. <laughs> or Mountain Dew. So. <laughs> All right. So, okay, there's another picture of the professor. So, All right. And this is um, Helmet's monster, uh, Buttergon. It's basically Mrs. Butterworth if she was a giant monster. <laughs> right. Some random oh, and this is Servo's monster, the bushy butted Amazonian rose oh, yeah. spider. I remember this from the stream of consciousness pilot yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> pilot episode, aka the one we don't want to talk about. <laughs> I don't know. The Grapes of Wrath was pretty fun to do. Thanks. I'm I'm debating what to call this episode. Is this live stream or this is just ha late night with Wrath and Shoma? So Well, it could be the Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Also, I I like that, but I think I might save it when I actually go to a convention. So, so oh, are you going to be uh, just just to let you know? I'm going to try to do a Doctor Who convention uh, on the fifteenth to, to the seventeenth, uh, and there and there's one like in the in an airport Marriott hotel that's in like local distance to me. Are you going to be happening to be in town around that around that time? Which month, depending? Uh, February fifteenth uh, uh, to seventeenth. Um, I. Don't know. I'll have to see how my schedule is and have to check it out. If I can attend, then I can attend. If not, then yeah. uh, I'll definitely be in L.A. during July, which okay. is because the Anime Expo's every year. So, okay. I, I, ironically, I might not be in L.A. Dur during July. I might be. I might be down in uh, Chicago at G Fest. So, so depending on how things go. All right, but yeah, if you wanted to go see a Doctor Who convention just for the 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 shites and giggles, just, hmm. just keep me in mind. So, and it's although I'm debating, <laughs> someone's eating chips. <laughs> oh, uh, technically, That's... I'm kind of nibbling at some chocolate chips because I oh, no. got a little, I got a little snacky, and I didn't want any pots and pans banging in the background because I got too lazy to mute my mic. So. That, I just grabbed something quick. That's okay. That's okay. We, we're, we're all victims to uh, snacks. <laughs> ah. I don't know if anyone heard that. Oh, 
still do, am I still coming out sounding good on the uh, YouTube? Yeah, you list? sound fine. And did hear that. I'm just trying not to rustle my bag too much because okay. I'd rather uh, not trigger the audience that may have misophonia. For those who don't know what misophonia is, I have no yeah, idea. People, what... <laughs> it's something. It's a condition where people can't handle particular sounds. Like if someone hears the crunch of a chip over a mic or someone chewing gum or uh, slurping ramen noodles, it drives them absolutely buggy, which mm. I can kind of understand because normally if someone's nibbling on something, you would expect them to kind of try to be as discreet and quiet as possible while having their nibbles and mm. hearing the sound of gum being chewed or ramen noodles being eaten that I can imagine that would just annoy the hell out of people. Right. Make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you use a side of a ramen cracker restaurant? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the cone wizard since you pointed him out. All right. I have this friend named Louis Calderon. He's a very talented artist and you can find some of his works online. Um, he's also known as Space Boy Lewis. Um, but no, he's a really cool guy. I've known him for several years now. He's also, uh, but no, we did this joke once where we found just like a, a, a traffic cone in the middle of the road for no reason whatsoever, abandoned probably from a road construction ages ago. And it's like, oh man, I wish I could wear that as a hat and call myself the cone wizard. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's like oh oh we gotta film that we gotta do a short film where you just randomly put on a cone and then you become the cone wizard and start blowing people up randomly with lasers or something needless to say we never did the film but i recently did this it's just kind of on a paint or bitmap just kind of as a gag for lewis so this is what the cone wizard would look like so <laughs> oh right i gotta send you the image by, by skype i'm sorry Oh, no, I can see it. Okay, okay. So. I just right. thought the live stream was lagging at the time, only to find out the share screen was never hit. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, why isn't this working? Oh, duh! <laughs> you did learn computers live with Shoma. <laughs> um, okay, they call me the world's slowest one-finger typist. Let me see if I can do this. A. Uh, uh, A. <laughs> <laughs> B <laughs> R so, Okay, and um, right now this is just something stupid I made. Um, since you're a big fan of glue, you think you, I think you'll get a big kick out of this. The glue comedy of errors universe. And this <laughs> like based on everything that glue's been connected to, both in the comics and it's like offhanded references and like our live streams and audio plays, these are all little things that glue is loosely connected to. So as you can see, Glue is in the middle, the Global Lords United Endeavor. And I'm not going to go too much into detail, but it's like it's connected to SCTV and Count Floyd and the Ed Grimley, as well as Str Strange Brew. It's connected to all my original wor other works, like Star Angel 2098, Nira, Psy the Robot Guy. Uh, it's connected to the Music Man and Found of the Paradise, uh, so my hentai stuff. We won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> RB, Carby Comics, uh, Stupid Reviews. And, and the animated Batman the animated series, which had detective driven corruption, and soon teenagers from outer space. And I, I'm not going to go into full detail, but you can you can kind of see it just it just keeps going. So and, and and as you as you since you love the Buck Rug the Water Lizard references, there's the Doom that came with Sarnath. So <laughs> and of Very course, nice. yes, thank you. And uh, audio sequency, which is Kaiju Noir's channel, which connects to Crooked Lords Productions. I'm going to be here all day trying to explain this. So I'm going to get out of this. All righty. <laughs> all right. So, oh, and uh, and soon after I do some more work for an upcoming review of RB Comics, it will also be connected to Night of Lepus and Giant Spider Invasion. So, well, let me pass some of these like non essential illustrations. So, did I already share all the princess stuff? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'm not going to get into that right now. And, I th oh, let me do the unrift again for everybody who didn't see it. When I thought I had live live screen on, I didn't. Okay, so this is for unrift these little Photoshop pictures, and it's going to be a podcast series that me and Brayton are going to do in between the gamma the gamma fan episodes. 
And basically, we just take like different movies or feature on Mystery Science Theater and talk about the movies themselves uh, before we talk about the Mystery Science Theater episode. So we give the movie a fair shake. And we decided to start with the Mexican Santa Claus uh, movie mm -hmm. from 1956, I think, or 52. Um, but it's it's a very garish, bizarre child children's movie. And as you can see, I photoshopped my face into its film's version of Santa Claus, <laughs> which wasn't easy because I got I got a black beard as opposed to the white beard of Santa. So I'm surprised this even worked out. So and then there's Brayton as Pitch, the uh, main villain of the movie, which is a devil from hell who has been sent by Lucifer to stop uh, Santa from you know. Yeah. So give yeah. So of all the Christmas specials where Santa Claus faces a threat from outside that ruins Christmas, this one actually has Satan's meddling in it. So. <laughs> and, and, and I think this one came out a lot better than Santa Claus Me, as you can see, because Brayton, yeah, Brayton looks a little too much like uh, Pitch the uh, Devil, and they said short. So, and of course, there's also like for some reason instead of elves, Santa Claus has an army of international. Children who serve him as allies and uh, and um, I don't want to use the terminology slaves, but I don't think they sleep anywhere else. Uh, <laughs> but but it's basically it's a small small world after all, brought to life in live action form. It's it's as it's as terrible as you think it would. And well, and <laughs> well why hire elves that can come out of the shadows and stab you when you can uh, use child exploitation? I know that's, that's what a a lot of switch shops do. Yeah. Sad, but true. <laughs> Fun time with late night on in Shoma. So. Where our humor can get dry and potentially offensive. So right. I apologize profusely. No, it's okay. It's okay. I just I just made a terrifying threat against the corporists earlier. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, so what I'm getting at is that one of, one of Santa's lead helpers is this little Mexican child, and uh, there's on. This is the worst of the three photoshops. Andres as this little uh, sombrero wearing a Mexican child. Oh God, poor <laughs> Andres. <laughs> I know. I doubt he's watching this right now. So when he comes in, it's like, what's going on? I hope nothing bizarre or weird has happened. Isn't that right, Captain Kirk? <laughs> yes. So that was my terrible Andres impression. I'm so I'm so sorry. <laughs> so and he's not in the proper podcast itself. We just thought we'd put him in for like background fodder. So there you go. So it's like I'm tempted to show the original photos where that came from, but I won't. So and the rest is just random illustrations, including Miss Blue, who Actually, actually, screw it. It's like Brayton's not here. I can share this character. So this is basically my go-to fan fan cheesecake character. <laughs> <laughs> so Miss Blue, the alien uh, celebrity from outer space, who I don't know. <laughs> I I hope Brayton's not here. He hates this character with a passion. So <laughs> I, I I can't blame him though. She's on the surface, she's fairly two-dimensional, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And I think that's. Oh, I can I can share. Actually, I'll wait for Brayton to come on if he comes on early. So, thank you, Win, for being around, being here. No problem. You're welcome. So, no, thank you. I should. Why am I saying you're welcome? Well, no problem, and thank you. Right, right, and of course, something stupid I just made. Uh... Oh, if it shows up on the screen. May the force be... Oh, god damn it. <laughs> it reminds me of a t-shirt I saw with a Dalek on it that says R2-D2. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved it. I can't remember what it fully said, but it was one of those purposely fucks up the franchise it's from kind of shirts. Right, right. I, I, I fell in love with those kind of weird shirts and memes, and I thought it'd be hilarious just to do one where it's a scene from Ultraman with this alien Mephilus talking to this little kid telepathically, and just say, may the force be with you, Doctor Who. <laughs> so, oh, dear um, God. Yeah, yeah. It's like I've screwed over like three fandoms in, in one image. So. <laughs> Well, it'll. I can now understand why you might have a bounty on your head now. 
Uh, indeed. So, the well, Nerdosphere t- takes their franchises seriously. Uh, tell me about it. it. It's so sad when you post these kind of joke images, you know you're going to get that one guy who's like, well, actually, you have it all wrong, Mr. Inchuma. So, oh, God, good. and they probably look like comic book guy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Or worse in some regards. So. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so, do I have anything else to hear to share? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. In fact, I'm gonna return to regular camera. So. All right. Sounds good. All right. Stop sharing. Okay, we're back on. Uh... Wait. Camera has been turned off. Camera is turned on. Wait, camera is... I have no idea. Learn Computers Live with Nshoma. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> you ever get that feeling of deja vu? <laughs> Every day of my waking life. <clears throat> Don't show... Oh, I just got a message from Brayton. Don't show the Mystery Science Theater artwork, you bastard. I will cut you open with a knife and eat your innards like Christmas Day turkey. Love, Brayton. Okay, so yeah, don't don't worry, Brayton. I did not show the actual artwork they were going to use for the Mystery Science Theater fan episode, just the unripped stuff. stuff. So oh. I don't know if you can read that. I better I better type that down. Mm. Don't worry, we only showed the. Hey, if you would you like to come in for like some episodes of uh, Unrift for the future? Sure, that would be okay. fun. Okay, that means unfortunately I have to watch the episode, an episode of Mystery Science Theater without the robots commentary. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, so so far we're only sticking to the quote unquote good movies that were shown on Mystery Science Theater. So, so I'm I'm sorry, Win. There won't be a retrospective on Giant Spire Invasion anytime soon. Ah, oh, raspberries. <laughs> You've been hitting the booze again. All right, I just calmed down, Brayton. So that sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> down, Brayton, down. <laughs> sit, Brayton, sit. Good boy. Good boy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Hi. You, is that your cat again? Yeah, he's kind of. He's cuddling against me and purring, and now he's getting out of my arms because, you know, cats, they're fickle. They act like they right. want attention. You give it to them, and they suddenly don't want it anymore. Yeah. And now I... he's just kind of sitting on my desk <laughs> as, though I'm, as though telling me, read my mind on what I want, human. <laughs> look into my eyes. You look into my eyes. I demand kibble and bits. Is that Even I fed him at three o'clock, and so he's yeah. not getting fed till like five or six in the morning because I feed him twice a day because that's normally how you feed a pet. Yes, it is. So, well, I'm gonna have to adjust the screen here. Look, it's my fingers. Because See? I'm not gonna overfeed you. I don't need you turning into a fat cat. I don't need right. people thinking you're Garfield. <laughs> I hate Mondays, and my legs don't work anymore. <laughs> oh, God. Garfield, the true story. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's why those comics aren't funny anymore. Poor Garfield has to be rolled around like Job of the Hut. So, well, mm-hmm. you didn't show any of... Oh, darn it. No, it's... Hold on. Sorry, Brayton. I may have screwed up in the monster regard, but it was brief. Sorry about that. I'm taking care of it. Okay. And no one watches my channel anyway but I'll up to you. Sorry. My head.
dead air, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's, what, that's what life is all about. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt while you were typing. No, that, that's okay. I am so terrible at multitasking. I, it's like I'm one of those people who has to read out loud. It's like <laughs> then somebody else comments like, oh, great. He reads out loud. Yay. So. Yeah, it could be worse. Yeah, that is true. It's like, well, it's like when I started this live stream, I forgot to turn on the Google Hangout. So it's like, why isn't the live stream coming on? Oh crap! <laughs> so, at least the opening I planned came out okay. So, oh, are you familiar with Ernie Kovacs? Uh, you may have to remind me. Yeah, he is a a television comedian who. Okay, break, and I won't read our messages out loud. <laughs> okay. Duh. I'm suddenly getting another case of deja vu. Uh, I, that's my least favorite Neon Harbor show. <laughs> that was an obscure reference. I make no apologies. <laughs> oh my goodness. Kazoon tight. Oh, thank you. I couldn't mute my mic in time. Oh, that's that's okay. That that was an impressive sound effect right there. <laughs> I was hoping to remake the uh, the the battleship Plotinkin, and I think I'll use I'll, I'll use that sneeze as the explosion effect. Oh, you're hilarious! Right, I am. I am barely, kind of, not really. <laughs> yeah, that was impressive. <laughs> Unleash the cat laser! Pew pew. I think that might have been why I sneezed. My cat's getting hair all over the place, even on my desk. Aww. I'm not necessarily allergic to cats, but the irritants the in themselves can drive me crazy. Oh, definitely. It, it, it's just dander, and it just it just gets all over the place. Ugh. So Yeah, there are moments where I have to kind of clean off my desk constantly because the cat hair makes it really hard for my wireless mouse to read properly. Oh, you have a wireless. Yeah, I can. I can. I've I've had experiences with wireless mics. So yeah, I never. used to do wired ones, but he likes to chew through the wire cords. And the way my desk is positioned, I don't think there's one long enough that could work with the way my desk is. So I've got a wireless. I know there are some that are that do have longer cords, but mm -hmm. I'd rather not shell out $75 for a gaming mouse. Ooh. Um, why is that, Why is everything so expensive these days? I don't know. It's like, I just need a napkin. I don't need a smart napkin with a, like an iPod touch screen. <laughs> it's, it's like, I can play games just fine with the keyboard and mouse I have. I don't need to shell out 79 to 80 bucks for the latest Razer Naga. Mm. Razer Naga. Is that a new Power Ranger monster? <laughs> it's the name of a gaming mouse, but I can definitely see how that would be some semblance of a Super Sentai monster. Yeah, so it's like, I'm the Razer Fight Naga. <laughs> <laughs> Fight me, Rangers. <laughs> or to make it more relevant to our friends. I, the ever terrifying Razor Naga, challenge you, Draco Azul. Oh no! <laughs> it looks like I'm in deep water. I must summon my giant robots. <laughs> That's my that, again going back to my terrible uh, kaiju noir impression. <laughs> Not my as God. bad as my monster impersonation, because <laughs> as I said, I can only do mostly either little kid or feminine voices, and it doesn't <laughs> help that. This damn cat dander has me congested, so I sound even worse than I normally do. Well, if you if you need to take a breather and bow out of the live cast, it's okay. I think I can entertain myself for like the next three hours. <laughs> oh no, I don't need a bow out. But if you see my mic mute on and off, chances are it's because I need to grab a tissue. Okay, no, it's okay. We're, we've all been there. Thanks, cat. So, got all yes, my he's. He's cute. I love him the bits, but he's a turd and sheds a lot. Even though I brush his, I brush his little orange fur every day. Right, and it's, it's always terrible too when a turd is covered in orange fur. It just ruins the brush. 
Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, what are yeah. these days? What are these days? Boom to the moon. <laughs> yes. Oh, get off it, win. Yeah. <laughs> That's my oh, whole. Who, who asked you, Jack? <laughs> Actually, I was trying to do the impression of uh, of uh, the Honeymooner's wife character, but that came out horrible. Ah, uh, Alice, okay. <laughs> right, Alice, thank you. I totally forgot her name. I almost called her Wilma. <laughs> well, it is based off of the Honeymooner, so you're not too far off. Right, right. Oh, my goodness. The complicated history of the Flintstones. <laughs> <sighs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm um, having so much fun just hanging out and drawing. So, do do do. There's George Went. George Went is coming through. <laughs> I need a beer, buddy. Ah, <laughs> uh, so. Oh, getting back to Ernie Kovacs. It's like I, w I wish I could show you some video footage of him. Although I don't know if. If we, oh wait a minute, could we do that live or something? If not, the worst case scenario, you can always link it in Skype to me, and I can always watch it later. Oh, okay, okay, then I got I got the perfect thing to show you because Ernie Kovacs was a very strange but inventive uh, gentleman, and he he was very ahead of his time despite doing television back in the fifties um, and, and early early sixties. Um, best way to describe him, he's a precursor to like Monty Python and um, Monty Python and uh, Kids in the Hall. You know that kind of weird comedy. So okay, okay, I'm and, suddenly uh, intrigued. Yeah, hold on. There, thankfully, there's a bunch of like old television specials that his uh, friend Jack Lemon made uh, called "The Best of Ernie Kovacs" that shows a lot of uh, like his more bizarre sketches from late night television shows he did. So, and I will, first off, let me post it on the live stream so everyone can see. This is the best of Ernie Kovacs, volume one. So if you guys want to check it out, go ahead. We're not going to watch the whole thing. This isn't, this isn't, this isn't a very professional show like MJ Knight's setup. So there's no way, there's no way you can watch like a whole hour documentary about creepy subway British ghosts. <laughs> that one was fun to watch, but at the same time, really eerie as hell. Yeah, so. Uh, but but they, uh, BBC documentaries are the best, aren't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Especially especially the ones that are the nature ones done by David Attenborough or uh, like Worst Jobs in History with Tony Robinson. Oh my god, I love Worst Jobs of History. It's it it makes you appreciate that we're not alive back then. <laughs> yeah, it's educational, but at the same time, Tony Robinson's really entertaining to listen to. Right. So back in Victorian times, people couldn't make couldn't buy candles, so they had to make it by killing an elephant and sticking their fingers into the, the dead belly to pull out all the wax. <laughs> and sadly only children and women were forced to do this job. <laughs> so, right. That, that's my horrible impression of uh, worst jobs in history. <laughs> Don't worry, one of these days we will find someone to do a proper impersonation of Tony Robinson or David Attenborough. Right, right. I wish Brayton was here. Wait, Brayton doesn't watch British television. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, those, oh my goodness. Like, like, as much as I love history documentaries, it does make you appreciate that you're not alive back then. Because it's. I used to work in cons like t construction, mostly tile. And it's it's like as unfun as that job could be. It's like oh thank goodness I wasn't like back in like the Victorian era. Like oh god, I, I like or what's it? even before then. Yeah, yeah. Like what is it like the ancient like the ancient Vikings when they had to transport a ship over a yeah, small like hill? Yeah, Saxon period, maritime, mm -hmm. uh, fucking Tudor period. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, I can't. Oh my! I can only remember like some of the jobs are so graphic and terrifying. I can't mention them live on stream. So, let's just say for the Tudor period, uh, you see a part that brings a whole new meaning to the word ass wipe. <laughs> that was the one I didn't want to mention, but thank you, Win. <laughs> so, back in medieval times, the king had no I'll idea. I'll mention it so you don't have to. Right, right, right. 
Oh my goodness! It's like, and then it's like, what is it? The ancient Vikings when they had to move a ship on onto above ground to move to a a, a new uh, water stream, they would have. Yeah, to... I, yeah, I believe that was the one of the Anglo-Saxon jobs. Yeah, yeah, and like rotten fish on woods just to push this huge ship over. It's like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, or with the maritime with the ladies who had to clean and gut the fish. Oh. It's like that um. reference in The Simpsons. Knife goes in, guts come out. <laughs> come on, Marge, it's fun. <laughs> you know, you actually did a pretty decent impersonation of Dan Castanella there. Oh, thank you. I'm not going to try again because I know I'm going to ruin it the second time. So. <laughs> I can't really say. The closest thing I can do is maybe Ralph Wiggum. Oh. <laughs> And that's where I found the leprechaun. He tells me to burn things. <laughs> Yay, I'm in danger. Okay, that's enough, Ralph. <laughs> so, you don't need to share that information with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a creepy, uh, not a creepy, a crappy impersonation at the moment because it's kind of on the fly. If I right. have a better script in front of me where I can kind of practice or I have a drink in front of me, then it's kind of fine, but I... Unfortunately, it went through all the water in my water bottle earlier. Okay, if you want to get yourself a refill, go ahead. I got, I got like a bunch of drinks near me. I can't <laughs> offer them because I can't, you know, magically put drinks. Yeah, I know you haven't, drink. you haven't perfected portal technology. And the last time you tried to perfect portal technology, you were uh, accosted by a artificial intelligence named Gladys. <laughs> uh, she really and likes saying something about the cake being a lie. <laughs> I know, I know, and it did turn out to be a lie. I was so disappointed. <laughs> it's like when HAL 2000 says, we're going to Disneyland now. It's like, yeah, and then we just end up dead in space. It's like, HAL, you lied to me. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> My name's not Dave, it's Raph. I can only say Dave. <laughs> or that creepy teddy bear in AI, that movie with Haley Joel Osment. Oh, man. <laughs> The robots don't have emotions, my butt. That bear was hiding something. <laughs> so. Have you seen David? I like David. Chris Hansen pops out of the shadows. Why don't you take a seat over there? Oh, no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's like Chris Hansen is just there waiting for this little robot bear to try to get onto the high chair. It's like, you need help? No. <laughs> I will manage this. Three days later. Okay, now that you're finally seated. <laughs> Now tell me this, you claim to love to sleep with small children. <laughs> well, I was designed that way. Not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> the robo jail you go. <laughs> this has been Dateline NBC's To Catch a Pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris, Chris, not, not, not to uh, question the value of your show, but... Uh, I think you're now scratching the barrel. It's it's just a robot teddy bear. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I am anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Okay. Someone needs to Photoshop that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we cut to like Gamera flying to like a, a abandoned island. It's like I'm here to save children. Oh, who are you? I'm Chris Hansen. Please sit down. <laughs> And he's in a giant mecca. <laughs> and you just hear Andre's going, God damn it, who stole my robot? <laughs> it's Draco Zul dressed up as uh, Chris Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> we stole this robot from somebody, but hopefully it'll work out. <laughs> uh, what, what's this about? My tax return? <laughs> no, Gamera, sit down. <laughs> uh Yes, I think I will mute my mic for a quick moment. You can talk with the audience while I make a quick cup of tea via hot water and a microwave. Okay. Hi, third person watching, whoever you are. <laughs> Hello? Okay, all by myself. Well, while we wait for Wynn to come back and other people join, let me make some uh, special announcements. Um, hold on a moment. Let me get my papers here. Okay. Okay. Uh, the pool for the school will be cleaned out for the next uh, 14 weeks. We will not have a working pool. Now, usually this is the winter season, so this wouldn't be too bad of a problem. 
Uh, unfortunately, global warming is actually a thing, regardless if it's human-based uh, or not. So we will be suffering hot weather in the middle of winter. And it's only going to get worse because a nuclear weapons carrying airplane exploded in the atmosphere, uh, making it even hotter. So I'm sorry, if you guys want to cool down, we have a large freezer that you can go huddle inside, but you will need... No, oh, this joke's going nowhere. All right, next announcement. Um, to the person who stole my car, I will find you, I will destroy you, and I will end your family's legacy here and now. However, if you've left the chain inside change inside the change uh, section of the car, I will be more than happy to not kill you and end your life. And on the final note, uh, to all our kaiju students, please do not wander in the woods in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, we have reports of this psychotic murderer named Red Man, who uh, will fight and kill anybody he meets, mostly giant monsters. Now, I know you guys technically aren't giant monsters. You're just a bunch of Japanese stuntmen in uh, rubber monster suits. But this red guy, he is freaking crazy, and you do not want to deal with it. Uh, also, there will be free classes to help on improvisational jokes. I myself plan on a uh, attending these things, attending this class, and I hope you do too. And also, I should not have drank all that pink lemonade uh, near the start of this podcast. See, I was speaking perfectly. See? See? All that pink, all that. I was speaking perfectly at the beginning of this podcast, but now, now it's, it's just ruined. Just ruined. <laughs> oh, but it does water your throat. <sighs> Ooh, I made a little burp. <laughs> Thrilling music. Learn the computer <laughs> with the show my life. Next time I decide to do a live stream, I think I'm going to be a little less um, impromptu about it. I'm definitely going to... Oh, <laughs> yeah, there is a 30-minute delay. I now see the pink lemonade glass on the screen. Yeah, next time I'm going to be less impromptu and actually give a good heads up about this live stream. I think I might do it like a couple of days in advance. Uh, also, I hope this live stream isn't a reason uh, we haven't seen audio sequencing in a while. Well, that's probably just a dark conspiracy on my end. Paranoia is starting to get to me. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. Back to work, Raph. I gotta get this done before the morning. And what's the best way to get a title card done? Is to work on Brandon Tenold's big, beautiful eyes. You know, so sad. It's like earlier I was hoping we'd have a lot more people in the chat, and then uh, nothing. So I wonder if Arkham, Arkham, and Sean Barry are, are still there. Hello, gentlemen. If you got any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. I burped a bit. In fact, I'll write that in the chat. If you have questions, at burnt. Stupid. Post them and we'll answer. Um, yes, we can. So, XO, Raph Man. Oh, this keyboard's too sensitive. <laughs> and there are nobody. <laughs> I am terrible at live streaming. And now it begins. Okay, enough goofing around, I guess.
once I get this title card, a lot of people are going to be happy. A lot of people. I'll be like Santa Claus for real, except I don't have any gifts other than this illustration. Yeah, next time I'm going to see if I do a live stream a little earlier and try to get some uh, Ballyhoo behind it and see what happens. But I would, again, I want to thank my 195 subscribers. Without you guys, I would not be confident to even do this kind of crazy stuff live. So, and you, it's awesome that you guys chose to speak with me, or chose to watch me, I should say. So, because that, that means a lot. It's like I really don't have much confidence in a lot of my, of my video work. And uh, until I can get better equipment, all I can really do is just little live streams like this with a web camera looking in front of a, of a screen. So, okay. Oh, got to focus. This is an older version of Photoshop I'm using, by the way. Wait a minute. It also sounds like I might have a dog who wants to come in. Yeah, I might have to bring in the dog. <laughs> it's ironic that I am doing a picture with the Americans, America's greatest hero considering my sordid history with that character, but I'll mention it when one comes back. <laughs> okay. It's still early, thankfully. It's like 10 o'clock, and I can definitely breeze through the night if I need to. All right, and I return with a hot beverage. Hey there. Tea, coffee? Or none of the above. Uh, I decided on hot chocolate because my kettle. <laughs> I can't use my kettle since we're out of propane for now. Right, right. So propane. So microwaves don't have hot water. Put some hot cocoa mix together, mm -hmm. and still tastes as good because I tried making tea with microwave water before, and it just doesn't taste the same. Yeah, microwave. Yeah, microwavable water is a weird taste so i guess it's all the radiation oh we got a we got a new person in the chat steven walker in flow in floor go oh like, hey steve hey steve like i said if you guys have questions by all means that way we can answer them and keep this live stream going longer than it should so. <laughs> and eventually you may hear navi meow his opinions <laughs> which may get us in trouble because uh According to a couple friends of mine, due to an inside joke, a lot of people like to call him a racist cat. <laughs> so he's one of H.P. Lovecraft's cats. <laughs> Perhaps. Right, right. That's... Race Cthulhu. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, oh, and now he's doing okay, Steve. Okay. Oh, thank you, Steve. Steven's a regular, is, is he a regular guy at uh, MJ Knight's chat? Yeah, he normally does. He normally leaves uh, comments and questions, and sometimes he even comes on to talk with us, especially about his Ludo tournaments, which is freaking awesome. Right. Hello, Steven. Enjoy the Asylum's uh, ripoff of MJ Knight's chat. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Edit because, you know, we're not MJ Knight, but I'm. I'll have to say this since Andres isn't here. Shut up, Raph. Okay. <laughs> Shut up, Raph. I think it's a limit of eight hours for a stream. <laughs> and we're okay. <laughs> we're in it for the long haul. <laughs> oh, to be fair, we have gotten better. We've gotten the formula down packed, so we normally mm -hmm. stop at about three hours now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, any... Plus, if I remember correctly, another live stream I watched religiously before SKL became a thing. Back when uh, Emmer Provost was alive, I would constantly watch uh, Shooting the Shit with Emmer, and that was about three to four hours. Right. 
oh god it's like this one guy that andres knows who's a kaiju fan i forget his name but yeah he sometimes says live streams are five hours so but i would i'm not i don't know we'll see how far we go if breaking can show up at the at the last minute then great so spent yesterday at the uk toy fair how was it find anything good Let's tell us, Stephen, and we will read your chats out loud. Since it seems Ar it seems Sean Barry and Arkham have disappeared into the Bermuda Triangle. Just to let you know, speaking of glue, my big plan is to get the first uh, three issue, the first two issues fully colored and published. And I think I may end up going with Amazon Prime for that one example, uh, if I can't find like an independent publisher. But I also plan on doing a, I've done a bunch of like um, standalone short uh, strips that are just in thumbnail form right now, which I'm calling quick drying glue. Eh, get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Yeah. No, no, I plan on uh, publishing those with the first two issues. So it's, it, oh, yeah, it'll, yeah it'll make, make the book a little more hearty because the first two issues is really just like, like sit down at a meeting and Janet trying to convince everyone not to kill her. It's like, it's, n it's not exactly exciting. So, eh, all good, all good. I hope it gets published. And if you do any digital versions that need like a record over, you know, to find me. Oh, you're you're you're, pra you're practically doing all the female voices. <laughs> so oh, like, Jesus! Talk about pressure. Yeah. Also, I too miss Emma Steven. Yeah. And let's see. I saw a preview of Bandai's Thunderbirds toys. Seems that now that Bandai lost Power Rangers, they are branching out into other franchises. Well, maybe hmm. it'll be a step in the right direction from them, and they'll get the quality down yeah. packed and maybe not have companies charge yeah. so damn much because i remember when bandai made uh some of the earlier dbz figures i paid 13 dollars for a freaking piccolo figure when oh i was like 13 14 years old hmm 13. what kind of figure was that too it's like i it was the one that shot the uh makanko sapo or uh for those used to the earlier dub the special beam cannon <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's like hold still goku i'll shoot you to get to raditz it's like what <laughs> or to quote team four star because of a oh to hell with it special <laughs> beam cannon <laughs> and he says yes they are thunderbirds or go toys Ooh, oh, i'm intrigued is it of the uh is it of the family or just the vehicles well known a little bit so yeah, there is a bit of a 30, uh, 30 second uh, delay. My fault, I should have done it in real time. Yeah, you're good. Okay. So, but no, no, it's like, I also realize uh, we're talking Bandai Japan or just Bandai International doing that. I think probably place. Bandai International. Okay. No photos were allowed, but I got some of the details written down on in International Rescue Merchandise Guide. It's a Facebook page if you want, Scott McNeil. Uh, it's because Scott McNeil was the original voice for Piccolo before uh, being succeeded by Christopher Zabat. All right. Well, I didn't know they changed out actors. So, I guess... Yeah, I guess because Ocean was a Canadian dub company and then Funimation got the full rights and mm. they had a rocky start dubbing the Frieza saga, but as they went on, they gradually got better, did redubs and Dragon Ball Z Kai and... By then, they perfected the voice cast, and everyone came out phenomenally. Okay, so now, with that said, there was no real holdovers from the Canadian productions? Oh, no. Uh, Ocean had their own dub version, so Scott McNeil still did Piccolo on their end. Okay. Though there were a few cast changes, like Goku went from Ian Corlett uh, to someone else to Kirby Morrow. If you've seen Gundam Wing... Kirby Moro was Hiro Yui. And if mm. you've seen Inuyasha, he was Maroku. Right. <laughs> I'm a very scary voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I will kill you. And then 
I want you to have my children. <laughs> Things you would never expect uh, Goku to say. Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, the the go from Hero Yui to play Goku. That's like like. <laughs> I thought he has done. Uh, like I said, he has done some other voices that are really good. Like he's Moroku. He's Hero Yui. Mm -hmm. um, if you've ever seen Vision of Escaflone, he was the protagonist Vaughn. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend it. It's fantasy meets mecha, and it is glorious. Mm. 26 episodes of goodness. Okay, if it's one of those short anime series, and yes. It's like, I tried getting into One Piece, but then it's like... <laughs> But by by the time I was over, I realized the people watching it with me were apes, talking apes. <laughs> Get it? Because that one piece will never die. So, but yeah, it's twenty six episodes long, and there is a movie. And while that one's good, I would recommend the TV series more. Yeah, I I hate to say it, but a lot of anime movies that are based on television shows tend to be stories that are completely independent from whatever the real story is so it's almost kind of a non sequitur in film form or it's just a condensed version of the events from the film or the manga so yeah and stephen walker said that they had figures of the tracy brothers ko which is their uh espionage agent and close friend to the Tracy brothers. All right. And the mechanic as of uh, 3.75 inches. And in terms of the mechanic, I believe you mean brains. Right. <laughs> well, that's okay, Mr. Tracy. I'll design Thunderbird 7 and gets angry and throws the model. <laughs> there is no <laughs> Thunderbird 7. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. You are right, but there was this movie called... I know, Earth. I'm just yeah, saying okay. that someone would randomly shout that. <laughs> right, it's like, what's wrong with you and Shoma? <laughs> Give back your geek card! Never! Chris Hansen! I didn't touch any kids! No, no, this is about your geek card. Oh, thank goodness. And that time in Morocco. What? <laughs> oh my god. No, I'm sorry. Now, what happened in Morocco? I stole candy. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh, dear God. Okay. Oh, man. I'm surprised you didn't lose your hand, because the Code of Hammurabi is pretty heavily enforced. Oh, my goodness. Is it? Or are we are we just are we just playing into, like, old 30s movie stereotypes for comedic effect? Well, a little of comedy, a little combi. I don't know if oh. they do it in modern times, but back in the day, they would cut your hand off if you stole something, because that was the original branch of... Uh, known criminal justice was the Code of Hammurabi. Mm. Right. Oh, yeah, and it was referenced heavily in, like, uh, the Thief of Baghdad movie. So, mm -hmm. and I, think, I think he... Oh, God, I think he's been in the first Aladdin movie from Disney. So... Yeah, but fortunately, because it's Disney, nobody lost their hand. <laughs> Unless it was a villain off-screen in, like, the off-screen in the last five minutes, so... <laughs> Oh, the mechanic is a different... Oh, shit, that's right. I forgot. It's been so long. I'll have to rewatch it on Amazon Prime oh, to the... get reacquainted with the mechanic because I got so... I got so used to the hood being the antagonist, I forgot they had another one called the mechanic. I didn't even oh, know there was little... a... I didn't know there was a recurring villain outside the, the HUD. The hood. Is it the hood or the HUD? The hood. Okay. So I was almost... Because gonna say... it's, it's K.O.'s uncle. Okay. Oh, that's right. And K.O. was the Tracy's butler, and his daughter was uh, not Tintin? No, not Tintin. No, no. K.O. <laughs> K.O. is the uh, girl of the group. She's, okay. an old martial art She's an old martial artist, and she does a lot of the uh, espionage work. Right. While the Tracy brothers in International Rescue respond to emergency responses right. around the world. Yeah, and Parker and Lady Penelope are like the James Bond secondary unit who comes in the help. Yeah. Her. Okay. So. And they gave Lady Penelope much more wit. Not that she wasn't witty in the earlier 60s mm. version, but okay. she definitely shown through uh, the reboot so far. Right, right. Okay, now that we're on the same page, we're talking about the reboot. <laughs> yeah, Thunderbirds are go. I'm so sorry. I should have specified. That's a... 
goddamn remakes. <laughs> oh, man. Steven, I just want to say off the bat, thank you for all the text. It now, now feels less like a Bermuda Triangle like wasteland over here. So <laughs> with me and Wynn just like on our little rubber raft, it's like, oh, we'll keep this going. <laughs> New Tracy Island and two prototype action and rescue vehicle Thunderbird 2 with her check of grappling hook. Do you want? Do you want? Yeah, I you know I've only seen like like a, the first two episodes of the new series of uh, the reboot I should say, and um and a couple of clips here and there. I love the fact that despite the fact that we're doing CGI people, which is probably the best way to go in this day and age, um I do love that the models that they still use model effects for the backgrounds and a lot of the uh, other things, and it still looks good to this day. I have to admit. Yeah, it's a it's a mix of both, and it's really really well done. I would highly recommend the series if you can somehow get your hands on it. Mm -hmm. If not, not to sound like I'm trying to shill for Amazon here, but it is only like ten ninety nine a month to oh, stream to stream stuff on it, and it has a lot of the Doctor Who episodes on it too. There, not, <laughs> not to mention, uh. Not to, not to mention you would get Amazon Prime, so if you ordered anything off of it, it would come pretty quick. Right, and there's a lot of tokusatsu and Japanese superhero stuff on Amazon Prime, too. Although you have to be careful. Some of it is like uh, sub fan subs that have ended up there without anybody really knowing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, I've had some experiences in some aspects with a few shows here and there, but... Mm -hmm. It's definitely worth the investment. Okay, okay. No, it's nothing bad. Like you order it from Amazon Prime, and it's like, and it's like just a giant screen that says "Gotcha, sucker." Ah, <laughs> uh, what a digital! You can never go wrong with them. Okay. After all, they did a lot of the CG for. Uh, well, it is Peter Jackson's studio. They did a lot of CG for things like King Kong, Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Uh, they did the. What uh, was used for the mocap for the Adventures of Tin Tin, the uh, 2011 mm. movie. Right, love that movie. It's so good. Yeah, and, uh, and the comic is good, and I I miss the I miss the 90s cartoon. I wish they would bring that. I wish they would bring that back on a Netflix or Amazon right. or pick it up. I'd be all over it. <laughs> Why? As you can see, I'm focusing on uh, Brendan Dennell's uh, crotch area, but I'm getting out of there now. <laughs> <laughs> also with doctor who the new year special had a location which is literally down the road oh man that is pretty neat steven oh, oh yeah cool steven you're our new best buddy steven <laughs> i'll have to keep up on it though i know that i know a lot of people find jody whittaker charming but from what i understand people aren't too keen on the the way the writers uh pushing the show but I haven't seen the new much of the new series yet. I've only I've, seen a little bit. I've I've watched enough of the new series to give a a, a better opinion. Um, a more worth informed. Watch. It's it's worth checking out, but it's definitely one of the weaker seasons of Doctor Who, and I think it has nothing. I know a lot of people online are like using the fact that there's a female Doctor as the as the big you know reason why it failed. But no, I just think it's just a lot of underwhelming scripts or scripts that are. I don't know. From what I understand, they did not get any of the regular writers of Doctor Who or even went out of their way to find a new science fiction writers. They used a lot of writers from like socially conscious shows. And there's nothing wrong with so, uh, social uh, commentary in science fiction. In fact, a lot of, lot of the great things done in Doctor Who has been done, you know, with social commentary in mind. Oh, yeah. But, but it's, I, I think they got the kind of people who you tell them to write like, like, I don't know. You tell them to write a, a science fiction story, and instead they just do like a like a domestic drama that just happens to have spaceships in them. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. It's the best way I can describe it. And I, I don't know. It's like some, some like there's some things about the, the last series I really like. Like I like the companions very much. They they're a great team. But at the same time, I get the idea the writers couldn't really wrap their heads around the Doctor, and he's and she's sort of a a, a tertiary character. And not only that, but I also find it I, ironic that Chris. Chipnell, who's in charge of the series, he focuses too much on on that subplot that is man the real monsters, that sort of old cliche. So you have a lot of stories where the monsters are supposed to be sympathetic and the humans are evil. And I don't care what the anti-SJW people keep saying. 
there's a lot of stories in the 11th season ends where basically the bad guys win, so to speak, even if it's subtle or something. And it's, it's a little annoying because it's the doctor. He, he, he you know, I don't know. Yeah. So it, it's the best way I can describe it is it's underwhelming. It's okay to still watch, but it's, it's definitely one of the weaker seasons of Doctor Who. And the New Year's special, though, is a return to form because it's just a full on action adventure romp. With 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 a really with a classic villain coming back because this whole season there are no returning villains. So if you're expecting some kind of cool nostalgia stuff with Ice Warriors and Santarans, yeah, it's not happening this season. But at okay. least the yeah, at least the New Year's special had one, one returning favorite, and I think they did a really good job with that one character. So yeah, I ha as I said, I had a feeling it was the writing people weren't keen on because. There yeah. were a lot of people who do find uh, Whitaker uh, very charming in what she does. And even beforehand, during the Capaldi run, they had the Master regenerate as Missy. And Missy was a fucking treat to watch yeah, on I screen. <laughs> she was an epic, she was an epic troll to <laughs> the Doctor. She was the perfect fucking foil. And yeah. I loved every moment of it. So I definitely know that it isn't uh, the doctor's a woman, meh, 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 meh. Because one, we have Missy. And two, mm -hmm. way beforehand, River Song in one of the previous runs had said that Time Lords can regenerate into anything. And there was one point when uh, David Tennant, David Tennant's regeneration started the Matt Smith run. Matt Smith thought he was a girl for a second. He was a like, wait, this heck, I'm a girl. <laughs> well, no, it's like, wait, and still not a ginger. <laughs> well, even even further back, we almost had a black Doctor Who instead of Matt Smith. Like this, oh man, I I I gotta look up his name. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But they really wanted a uh, this really talented black actor to take on the Doctor Who role, and I think he would have been great in the role if given a chance. But he decided not to. I don't know if it was either because he thought it may have been too radical with change and it was a career movie they want to do right away, or he had other things he was more interested in. But yeah, we came very close to having a black doctor. And only that, but we've had a lot of very confident female members of the Time Lord species, or the Time Ladies, I should say. Mm -hmm. Like Romana, who's like one of my all-time favorite companions of the old Tom Baker, Doctor Who. Um, oh, she yeah. was, a, yeah, she was a lot of fun. And of course I know she's, I know she's very decisive amongst the fans, but I really thought the Ranny was a great villain. Like this, this amoral and surprisingly cruel Time Lord scientist who, unlike the doctor and the master really didn't give a care about the battle between good and evil. Just what satisfied her scientific uh, knowledge is what she wanted. So it's funny too, because it's like, there's a story called is it time? Of, I oh darn it! <laughs> time in the Rani, which is her first appearance. The Rani, by the way, is like I think Hindu for um, princess. Um, that's why she's called that. But no, it's great because in the story, the Doctor and the Master are also in it, and the Master is just like 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 in awe of the Rani and all her scientific experience. It's like no, oh man, do I really have to have you around here, you sycophantic weirdo, and your your your, your rivalry with that Doctor? Ah. <laughs> Not to mention, even though she was short-lived, uh, Lady Cassandra was pretty uh, diabolical in her own way. After all, she did try to steal Rose's body. Right, right. A... <laughs> oh, man. It's, uh, you know, it's funny. Like The great thing about Doctor Who is like every era with its different writers and producers has its ups and downs. And I, I've come to appreciate Russell T. Davis quite a bit. Like He was... A really good producer. He kept the he kept the gears running, and I do even knowing he he went a little too far in the camp in some episodes. I do appreciate that he went he uh, to quote Mel Brooks. He went there to ring that bell and allowed the fantasy elements and the wackiness to shine through, because it's it's like I I honestly am happy Doctor Who was never revived as an American television series. I know they tried to once with the TV movie, and the TV movie isn't that bad. But at the same time, it's like I, I it would suck to have like, oh no, it's Cybermen and it's just guys in suits with like little silver knobs on their on their ears. Like these are the Cybermen because we dare not scare the the squares in the audience by actually showing <laughs> a lot of monsters. Uh, and and then of course Russell T. Davis is that great thing. Like Lady Cassandra's first episode was just a full on, okay, this is how Doctor Who is gonna be, and it's most insane. Here's a bunch of aliens gathering for an end of the world party. 
So, and I, I'm even knowing that episode, um, fittingly titled "The End of the World," isn't one of the best episodes. It's still very important in the new era of Doctor Who. So, but oh, now I'm just going to get into a Doctor Who rant. <laughs> Yay, the Doctor! And, and God damn it, Stephen, with the freaking moisturize me. <laughs> Moisturize me, moisturize me. Like, Jesus Christ, get this woman some Jergens. <laughs> oh my goodness. So and I, I did like well, I did like how her character had a bit of a redemption arc in her second appearance, but I'm I'm one of the only people who likes that kind of insane Futurama type uh, future earth that they keep revisiting throughout the Russell T. Davis era. It's like, for example, I actually liked the episode Gridlock a lot, and not just because I had giant crab monsters in them, but just because of just the kind of like it's like Futurama, but a more pleasant version of that world, and one that's worth saving, especially when the Doctor discovers the terrible secret. But anyways, getting back to Doctor Who as a woman, first off, it's it's science fiction, and if you if you do it intelligently, yeah, you can have a time lord easily turn into a woman, especially since. And no offense to everybody who would you know question otherwise, the difference between men and women are 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 relatively minor on a genetic level. So if time wars were real, I would not at all, it would be very plausible in, in my thinking that they would change genders easily between different, um, between various genera uh, regenerations. So, mm -hmm. yes, but no, I have absolutely nothing against a female doctor. Oh, and also getting back to some of the examples you brought up, we also had uh, Donna Noble briefly became as intelligent as a time lord and was kind of, like, I love Donna. She's a great, great character. Um, uh, but also her brief time as like Donna the Doctor was also a lot of fun too. So unfortunately it had that kind of tragic bent to it at the end. So Oh yeah. And there was a short time, even though it led to Eccleson's regeneration, uh Rose was pretty much a god for the the last ten to fifteen minutes of the episode. Oh yeah, the the bad wolf episode. Which yeah. reminds yeah, that episode, the 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 panicking contestant uh, who survived all the deadly games, who ultimately ends up getting killed by the Daleks, uh, he that actor was supposed to play the Doctor. I'm trying to find his name right now, but I'm, oh my goodness, I'm, oh darn, Wikipedia, you don't make it easy. <laughs> Let's see, according to Steven, one thing that annoyed me was the paradigm Dalek design only featured in the series five, and due to the backlash, they phased them out. And he also said they're starting a new Earth audio series. Ooh. Oh, what? Who was that? Do you want? Right. Do you want? <laughs> right. What, 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 what audio series? <laughs> well, we'll find out if Stephen types it out to us because I'm rather intrigued. Okay. Oh, Steve. I thought it's like Stephen Moffat's on the chat. Cool. No, no, not Stephen Moffat. Okay. <laughs> Stephen Walker and Florgo. Hi, Stephen Moffat. How you doing? I make angels out of clay, <laughs> and I sell them at the corner. I love my 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 um weeping angels. La la la. Stephen Moffat. He's gone mad. <laughs> Damn it, Raph. I'm sorry. That's my terrible impression of Stephen Moffat. <laughs> Oh shit! You met Billy Piper. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. How how is how is she? She seems like a nice person. <laughs> now, is this the rest of the podcast? This is like, hey, Stephen, tell us about the world outside. <laughs> Bloodly. Big right. finish, he says. Okay. Oh, big finish. Which is the uh, audio. Right. I've yet to hear any of their audio plays, but I keep hearing they're really good. I'm actually get this done before the evening. So, even with such wonderful company slash distractions. <laughs> uh. <laughs> now, um, about Doctor Who, do you have any particular episodes you really love of Doctor Who, like personal favorites? Hmm. It's 
hard to say really there are so many that i like i know there was when they i know they met a younger queen elizabeth i know they <laughs> that one was really amusing to watch there was the whole uh Eccleson run with the creepy kid in the gas mask <laughs> and the, our first appearance of Jack Harkness before they started hinting at the Torchwood series. Right. Mommy, are you my mommy? Mommy, <laughs> I'm scared of the bombs. Right. It's like, run, Rose. I need you, mommy. <laughs> mommy. Right. Oh, I, I sent a god to its room. <laughs> he got excited about it until the god decided he wanted out. <laughs> so I do love the revelation. Like, I know Stephen Moffat would overdo it after his era, but I do love the... Thank you. We didn't know you were such a Doctor Who fan, <laughs> Navi. <laughs> what? You, you love the cat nurses from Gridlock? And, uh, yeah, well, of course we know. <laughs> for obvious reasons. So... <laughs> <sighs> you, you, you also, precocious gimp. Right. Uh, Navi, you also like the cheetah people from the last Doctor Who story, Survival? Oh, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That is a loud cat. <laughs> As, he, he's very opinionated. Yeah. He's an orange tabby. All right. From what I hear, orange tabbies are very aggressive. They are. And oh, okay. he's a very opinionated one. When he was but a tiny kitten, he used to try to sit on my shoulder all the time when I'm recording. Oh, <laughs> Stephen Walker used to call him Pirate Cat. <laughs> right. All right, I couldn't find a pirate, a parrot, so I got this cat. Er. <laughs> no. Oh, a Stephen replied. Yes, as, he said, as an audio series based within new within New Earth, and another which followed the Doctor's daughter Jenny. And Billy Pepper was a nice person to meet, and he also said. I liked the Paradigm Dalek, but due to backlash, they got rid of them. Moffat, you coward. Oh, uh, you know, the... the uh, that did okay. make me salty. Yeah, yeah. Well, first off, um, I'm happy to hear they're actually making an audio series based on New Earth. Although, I, I wonder, is it a story where the Doctor visits New Earth? Or is it, like, the characters of New Earth and their everyday lives? It that, follows the Doctor's daughter. Okay. Oh, nice. So, Jenny's still there. Um, <laughs> uh, and also, what it's like, like the paradigm Daleks, that's interesting to bring up because I do agree they may they they were a little too colorish, and I can see why they probably alienated audiences. But at the same time, I got the joke when they showed up on screen. Like these are pure Daleks, and they're Daleks that look exactly like the kind of Daleks you expect from the nineteen sixties. So you know, like like the the bright, colorful Daleks from the Peter Cushing movies. So, and I totally got that. I I thought they worked okay, but I like like. Like the backlash, do you think it was a little overboard? I could see that the backlash was a little overboard. I kind of liked the new direction it was kind of going into. Just it was interesting to kind of see a Dalek's reaction to gaining sudden human empathy and being confused as hell about it. And <laughs> not, it's like on one hand, not sure how to react on the other hand kind of hating it to the point where it just kind of kills itself mm -hmm. and that was the first dog story too so mm -hmm. i yeah it's i wouldn't mind like i know we've gotten a lot of really good dalek stories and some of the spin-off media especially from what i understand the big finish audios i kind of would like to see more stories about daleks kind of wrestling with you know being for lack of a term more human or some like because I don't know. You can only do so much with so many stories where the Daleks are invading Earth and being pure evil. So, Yeah. And let's see. Stephen replied. Also, they did four audio series featuring the war doctor, John Hurt, before he died. Oh. But he acts he acts he, his socks off in those. So and I guess he gives a hell of a performance. The characters of New Earth, and they have Jenny's solo adventures to answer your previous question. Thank you, Stephen. So, oh, man, I almost... <laughs> that is nice. Okay, I, I like the New Earth characters, so... Plus, I want to see what happens to that one cat guy who marries the human woman and have kittens together. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, he suspiciously glared at the computer screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're one of those weirdos. <laughs> I don't like Mondays, and I don't like rap. <laughs> <laughs> and you suddenly turned into Dirty McCorruption. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. You don't understand a thing I'm saying. Like, oh, damn it, you're right. <laughs> oh, my Will God. you go away and untie Raph, who I know you have tied up and gagged in the closet, and uh, I give you a bribe sandwich, extra lettuce. Ooh, you mean extra lettuce by money, and mm -hmm. I do mean money as in bread, and bread yeah. with bread, <laughs> then I will let the little man go. <laughs> right, we'll go back on our deal. I will hit you with your one weakness. Oh, um, no. Not bullets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially when they're thrown at me. I don't like getting hit. Also, I'll sick Navi on you. I know cats are your other weakness. Oh, no. Not my other weakness. Cats. <laughs> and Steven so can tell you, Navi's no slouch in the combat field. No, well, then. You win this round, win. But know that I will be back someday. Oh, I can't think my brain froze. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> All right. Now, moving on now that we have the real raft back. Hey, everybody, I'm back. <laughs> Detective, Detective Dreamer Corruption is a terrifying, ugly-looking fellow. I, I, I utterly hate him. He, does, he, he doesn't remind me of me at the least. <laughs> Didn't he try to pull some kind of fast one on you and Brayton when you were trying to rescue Andres? I, <laughs> that's a story for another day. <laughs> Never ending the corruption. <laughs> oh. I warned you not to call that number. All right. <laughs> right. So, what? You need me to save your cat? Well, but I take the cat hostage and you got to save it. <laughs> you touch my oh. cat and I will riddle you with bullets. Right. Right. So, I honestly thought, like, <laughs> I, I honest, with this webcam, I was going to do a video. I, I may still end up doing it, but I'm going to do this video where it's like detected during my corruption, like saying, hey, everybody, I'm going to do a live, a live trailer reaction to the latest Shazam movie. And then before he even presses up and says, and I'm going to press not because I'm not a nerd like you people. And then he walks up after insulting the audience, he walks away and you just hear him taking a shower off camera while singing, like, like like some random song, and I was gonna have like a little rabbit puppet appear in the middle of it, holding a sign like "Help me, he's mad." <laughs> <laughs> and then Detective Dirty McCruffin comes back in a in a bathrobe. It's like oh, I forgot to turn it off. I hope nobody heard me singing. <laughs> and it just, just the video ends there. And Stephen confirmed uh, Navi may be cute, but he has the fury of a lion. <laughs> <laughs> of course, house cats are awesome. Sorry about that. I got distracted. I'm doing. I'm doing a beer <laughs> can right now. All good. Navi was trying okay. to get my attention anyway, so now he's right. kind of cuddling in my left arm. Right for now. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, until he decides to bite my nose like a jerk. Right. My one of my old cats. Um, actually, my first cat, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, Nikki. Uh, she, she she was a sweetheart and she got along with everybody, but she had such a weird relationship with my brother Miguel. And if you see my understanding the cosmos uh, short films with him, uh, he played Professor Gonzo, the psychotic uh, uh, educational show host. So I don't think I've ever shown you any of the understanding cosmos stuff. I don't think so. I'll have to look them up later. Okay, all right. I'll I'll post the links in a little bit. But no, 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 Miguel. Like he would tease the cat relentlessly he was one of those guys who would like like the cat comes up to have intention he would just grab the cat and just put it in a box <laughs> and walk away and she she would just totally accept it like she would come out of the box looking for miguel for more and i don't know why i think she had a bit of a crush on him but but here's the thing like late at night when miguel left it what was when miguel was asleep and he sleeps in a loft he used to sleep in a loft uh that's upstairs uh, the cat would sneak in slowly to get onto his chest and then just bop him in the nose, like bop, bop, bop in the middle of the night <laughs> and then jump right off the loft to safety. And I, I, I think she enjoyed the, like, like, I think, it, I, sh I think she enjoyed the little games they would play together. Although with Miguel, it was just utter content 
in a comical sense. With Nikki, I think it was like, oh boy, I get to mess with this guy. Yay! <laughs> so, like, again, to, to quote Space Ghost, cats are fun. <laughs> <laughs> and Steven says, final word on Toy Fair. They said the Thunderbirds toy line is due to come out to coincide with the rest of season three in April and May. Until told otherwise, stay tuned. Woot! Oh, wow. I even, oh, wow, that third season? Mm hmm. Oh, my God. I really got to get on top of that then. Yeah, I got to catch up too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm only familiar with Th Thunderbirds with the original series and the two movies. So, not the third movie. We don't talk about the third movie. <laughs> I only know a little of the original Thunderbirds because it did play for a short bit on Sunday mornings on a KCOP. Right. What, was it the full uncut episodes or was it like the heavily edited Thunderbirds Turbo where they took like a whole hour episode? Uh, like it, it, it was the original. I'd, I'd rather not experience Thunderbirds Turbo again. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm having non-flashbacks. <laughs> As I said with uh, the tattooed teenage alien fighters from Beverly Hills, fuck that show. Fuck that show. Fuck that, that show. show. <laughs> oh god, Tat. Somebody like somebody does this really this half an hour retrospective on tattooed teenage alien fighters and was like complimenting like the character development. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it was so cringy. I know, and it was like, like I, I revisited. I have yet to revisit Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills. They didn't even really try on the fucking costumes. It looks like they just went into a dance shop, snapped a, cut a fucking leotard in half, and then bought a uh, cheap ass ma mask from Michaels and spray painted it. Yeah, yeah, and it was like I know they were trying to ape Ultraman with those costumes. It was obvious. Like we can't afford that much. Latex it's like, costume. It's like, come on! At least Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad was entertaining, and right. all they all they needed was some settings and motorcycle helmets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They only they had five sets, but they used them well. <laughs> five sets, they used them well, and they even, as I said, they even did well budgeting on the costumes because all they needed was a leather jacket and a motorcycle helmet. Yeah, exactly. So. Oh, oh. Uh, I actually I've been watching a couple episodes of uh, Supreme and Samurai Cyber Squad, and it, it 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 as fun as it is to revisit the series. Um, it didn't age well. Yeah, it didn't age well. It's like the most nineties ninety ish nineties thing I've ever seen. <laughs> well, hey, we get Tim Curry out of it. Oh yeah, that is true. So, <laughs> what's the what's the now say please no good boy you're learning. <laughs> an, a, an actual line from uh, Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Oh yeah, I remember that. Right, right. So, oh, God, that would be a treat though, if they had if they had him make a, like a small cameo line appearance in the Gridman dub. Oh yeah, well, you know this. I know the sad thing is that Tim Curry had a stroke a couple years ago. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, he's getting better voice wise, but yeah, the poor guy is not. He's, 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 yeah, he's not in the same physical shape he used to be. Uh, and um, I don't. I hope. I wish him the best. I hope he gets better later, so he returns to voice acting. But yeah, that was really disappointing to hear. But I think they kind of honored um, because if you haven't seen uh, the Gridman anime, I'm not going to say the title. Japan has like some of the worst titles in the world, <laughs> so. I understand hey, what you mean, and I've seen like the first five episodes. I just know that instead of a spoiled, snobby, pretentious kid, it's a it's a neat who is a kaiju fan by the name of Akane. Mm -hmm. And and then of course the main villain Alexis Kirub in the American version, they decided to go with this kind of faux Tim Curry voice. So it's like, yes, I understand what you're saying, Akane. This is magnificent. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then not only that, but it's, again, SS, no, oh, darn, I almost said the title. The Gridman anime <laughs> is filled with a lot of great in-jokes and references, not just in the Japanese version, but even the dub version, kind of like, like, for example, they do have Alexis Kirib say meat thing at least once in the series. So, it was nice that they did that, like a little, and not only that, but what's great is in the Japanese version of the show itself, they actually do directly reference uh, uh, Supreme and Cy Samurai Cyber Squad. 
with uh you know the uh neon genesis high school students uh you mean yeah. shinji ray and asuka no no <laughs> no no in uh in the gridman anime there's this there's this group of like these four individuals who are actually the assault vehicles in human form oh yeah that's right yeah i've never yeah. seen a clip of them i <laughs> I kind of had a brain fart there because I was like, oh, wait, that's right. Studio Trigger's considered the new Gynax, so they can kind of get away with that. Yeah, and, and not only that, but they, they throw in all sorts of, like, if, if it's like even I was amazed by, like, all the Ultraman references that was going on in Gridman. It's like, really? You, you reference that character from out of the blue, a character that hasn't been seen in 50 years? <laughs> so... And it's not it's nothing too uh, like too extreme like you know the character itself shows up as like references and like in jokes all over the place but one of the in jokes they have is that when the neon genesis uh junior high school students turn into their vehicle forms and they uh they fight alongside gridman against the kaiju some of their attacks are named directly after their their surrogate characters from superhuman samurai cyber squad so sid tanker and amp Yes, and Lucky, like uh, like that's right. Lucky replaced Damp eventually. Oh, yeah, the one of the members is named Vet, who's named directly after the American name of the uh, flying jet from uh, Cyber Squad, and he's he's sort of the male bimbo of the three. You know, he's all handsome. But he's not that smart. He's a little lazy. But yeah, he was pretty much Tanker. Yeah. Oh no, no, Tanker was the big bruff guy. Oh yeah, that's right. Tanker was yeah. the jock. Uh, Sid was the computer chick. Mm -hmm. Uh. Amp, I, c I can't really describe the archetype he was. I just know that he was replaced by someone who was kind, who kind of came off as the surfer dude stoner archetype. Yes, Lucky was the stoner, the surfer, uh, and uh, Amp. They keep calling him the space cadet, and he's he's just basically like a comic relief weird character, like a like a better version of Screech, I would say, which isn't saying much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no, Vet, who's basically this this cool looking but ultimately lazy and kind of airheaded uh, male character who could transform into a giant jet to assist Gridman. He has two attacks: the Lucky Smokescreen and the Amp Laser Circus. Which oh, uh, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's great, and it's funny too because um, Toy Productions, who does uh, Power Rangers with Savant Entertainment, they. Mm -hmm. They they kind of they're not very proud of the American side of the franchise, uh, whereas Two Bright Productions just kind of embraces this completely, and making that reference was like very like like very welcoming. So it's like, so yeah. Oh oh, it's like, and there's this one little character named Bor uh, who I, I can't tell if she's like a little girl in a suit or something, but sh she can transform into a giant drilling device. And one of her attacks is the Sydney ad adhesive missiles, which are these giant glue missiles. Ah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so no, it's uh, like me, Andres, and uh, Crooked Lord, uh, who did, I, I also, also known as William, but I don't know what name he wants to go by. Um, we did a nearly three-hour podcast based on the Gridman anime, and that's currently in the works. We're just finishing the title card artwork and the editing. So, but yeah, I, th I think if you do mind spoilers, I think you're going to get a big kick out of that conversation we have. Because <laughs> towards the end of it, me and Crooked Lord, we just keep like like bringing up all the references and all the nostalgia. And like Andres has to like, okay, guys, we got to end this. <laughs> We're going to be here for another hour. So. <laughs> and before we do so, Stephen Walker and Slurp Go says, sadly, won't be getting my Lord Dracon cosplay before I see Jason, David Frank, and Amy Jo Johnson in May. No, oh. That sucks. Right. Well, at least you can have it for other conventions. Like, you ever, if you can ever get to the U.S. for Pasadena, you can always you keep it on hold for, like, Power Morphicon. Oh, yeah, that's happening in 2020. Right now, it's the uh, Japan World Heroes are having in uh, August. So... The Power Morphicon happens like once every two years. Ah, well, you could, he could also use it for anime conventions in general, since people do Marvel superheroes and Star Wars during them. So, uh, right. and Tokusatsu we, and Super Sentai are pretty much permitted. Yeah, and as we know, uh, uh, um, Lord Dracon is the greatest Star Wars Marvel villain ever. <laughs> Oh god damn it. <laughs> um I had to. I had to. <laughs> Shut up, Raph. Right. So did you see Godzilla fight the Batman in the Goonies? <laughs> <laughs> 
You're going to slap me, aren't you? <laughs> Come here. All right. Ah! <laughs> My face. Let's see. Steven also said his phone died for a bit, so it's on charge. Uh, that okay. He says, Hope he'll, hopefully he'll be back to the UK. Yeah. Well, if he has a positive experience, I'm sure Jason David Frank will be coming back. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, if you don't know Steven, J uh, Jason David Frank, he's such an awesome guy that he'll, if you have like Power Rangers merchandise, he'll sign it for free, especially if it's related to the Green Ranger or, the, or one of his incarnations. So you might, you might be able to get lucky in that regard. If that made any sense. <laughs> <laughs> he says, Navi, attack. Right. <laughs> well, you, sorry to do this, Raph, but... Oh, no! Stick him, Navi. Ah! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My beautiful face is being scratched open by a cat. <laughs> I hate Mondays! <laughs> to be fair, if it wasn't him, it would have probably been Princess. Right. <laughs> Oh, Princess is so sweet. She hasn't hurt me yet. The professor, on the other hand, he's a killer. Well, it could have been professor then. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like Lex Luthor, and on the public face, he seems nice, but in, per in person, ooh. <laughs> and your and because of the Lex Luthor reference, your cat is officially voiced by Clancy Brown. Oh my goodness, he's ten times in he's instantly super sexy. <laughs> <laughs> When I was a kid, I wanted to be Clancy Brown when I grew up. <laughs> well, that didn't work out. He was a pretty awesome villain, and he made the perfect Lex Luthor. Oh, and yeah. Fun fact, he's also Mr. Krabs. <laughs> the Clancy, yeah, I, I would like to see Clancy Brown do more comedy roles. That guy's, that guy's just as good as playing villains as he is doing comedy. Yeah, and I've seen, a, I've seen like a little segment of him behind the mic voicing Mr. Krabs. He's just going full ham. <laughs> Oh man, Clancy Brown's so cool. So, I think he'd be a great guy to hang around with, based on how nice he is in interviews and everything. So, oh yeah. <laughs> Damn it, I have a man crush on Clancy Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure many people do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. it's it's hard not to like the voice actor for Lex Luthor, the voice actor right. for Mr. Krabs, and. Someone who just so happens to also be a villain in the Conan movies. Right. Conan? Was he in Conan? I think he was in the second one, because I know the first one was James Earl Jones. Right, right. I know he was the I know he was the fir first big bad in the first Highlander movie. So Yeah, because I heard I heard he was in the second Conan. I could be wrong. I definitely remember him in uh the Highlander movies for sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> because Christopher Lambert was a freaking uh, Dun uh, not Duncan Connor McLeod. I was gonna say that's Adrian Paul. <laughs> uh, the Highlander franchise. Will it return? Probably not. So, but yeah, we should probably wrap it up. It's we've been going on a while, and it's almost midnight, so I should probably be wrapping it up to go to bed. <laughs> Okay, yeah, go go ahead and head off to bed. Um, I don't know if anyone else is going to join us, but I think next time I'll do it. I'll do it in advance and then see who wants to join us. But thank you, Win. You made this a much more entertaining experience than I was expecting it to be. Because no there, problem. Are, yeah. Because I thought, go on. I was going to say if you're still streaming and I can't sleep and I see other people join you, I'll probably pop back in. Okay. No, it's 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 totally okay. I think if if Stephen wants to like chat, I'll just answer whatever questions he has. It's like get to know and show him. <laughs> come to my house. Come to my house. <laughs> There's too uh, many people here in Shoma. Let them in. <laughs> all right. Well, unless uh, Insomnia decides to kick in at the last minute, this is uh, when the rogue vanishing into the night. Thank you for having me. All right. Oh, 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 always win. So thank you so much for making these podcasts so fun. Of course. I'm always willing to hop in. Okay. And I will have Boo will return in A View to Kill. <laughs> you bet your ass I will.
<laughs> I have a funny feeling someone's stalking me with sniper psychic bullets. I don't know. Goodbye, folks. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you have a good right. night. All right. Good night, Wynn. Okay, so now it's just the Raft and Shoma show. <laughs> All by himself. All by myself. Singing horribly. So, <laughs> let me see if I can get Andres to show up for a little bit. So, are you free for a little bit? I will never sing again. I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Or will I, as Detective Dirty McCruption? All that I touch turns to go. So, bye, Wynn. Okay, so Stephen, uh, looks like it's just you and me right now. If you want to uh, ask any questions of the great and mighty and Shoma, yeah, right. Uh, by all means, do so, and I will give you the best detailed answers I can give you. So, I, although I do ramble on a bit, so. Uh, while I still, I'm actually, actually, I'm confident. I think I, if I got to fo focus on this house illustration, it's not, it's a win-win situation. If I have to end this podcast a little early, no problem. I got this illustration to finish and, uh, yeah, no, it's good. I just got to finish. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm still in there. I'm still hanging in there, folks. Uh, so speaking of bad movies. Uh, I had a trip while I was working on this uh, illustration. I had a triple feature of some mystery science theater episodes, and I'm going to go over them very briefly with you people. Uh, the first movie I watched was Riding with Death, which was a compilation movie made from two episodes of a lesser known ABC uh, adventure series called The Invisible Man. Uh, despite its title, it's very loosely based on a. Um, uh, H.G. Wells' original novel, and it's just really a Stephen Bosco '70s um, procedural show, except the lead character can turn into can turn invisible. And sadly, you know, it's a compilation movie because they haphazardly touch upon its origins in some like uh, really crummy inserted um, sequences, like flashback sequences, I should say. Uh, it was it was an okay enough movie. It's one of those one of those movies featured on Mystery Science Theater that's not bad, but it's not too interesting to be overly good. Although it was finally nice to know where the he's more elusive than Robert Denvey jokes comes from, because uh, the main villain, or supposedly the main villain of this uh, quote unquote movie, is uh, Robert Denvey, who is like this master criminal who is an enemy to the um, investigation organization that the our lead hero, the Invisible Man, is connected to, and he's re he's really just kind of an evil con man who you know will threaten explosions and minor terrorism to make a quick buck, like a really unimpressive version of Lex Luthor. I think is probably the best way to s describe him. And uh, even though it's only mentioned a couple times by the characters in the in the movie itself, you know, it's like this Robert Denby is an elusive criminal. Uh, Mike and the bots, they take it, they, they decide to go full on wacky with the joke. And it's like, oh, man, this uh, this movie is as elusive in the entertainment department as Robert Denby. So and of course, I hear the Robert Denby joke get mentioned with a lot of uh, Mystery Science Theater fans. Although, like a fool, I never bothered to ask who Robert Denby is. I just figured he was maybe some like obscure celebrity that only a Mystery Science Theater uh, fan would know, or Misty, as they sometimes call themselves. But no, it was finally nice to know what that, where the origins of that joke came from. After writing with death, which was, a, I, I don't want to call it mediocre because it was well made enough, but it definitely, it definitely didn't really stand out uh, too amazingly. Uh, the next Mystery Science Theater on uh, my little triple feature, and practically almost every episode of Mystery Science Theater, is holy crap! We, <laughs> Stephen is back. One movie I'd like to see Mystery Science Theater. One movie I'd like to see Mystery Science Theater is one of the original Thunderbird compilation movies. Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. Like, sort of like the Captain uh, Captain Scarlet Mysterium movies. Uh, they took a couple episodes of Thunderbirds and edited them together as TV movies uh, for syndication. And a lot of these were shown on the very first season of Mystery Science Theater. Uh, they 
like they also did the same with uh, Stingray, which was an earlier um, uh, television series from um, Gary Anderson, as well as Captain Scarlet. And in fact, it's funny. I I remember I used to have the um, Thunderbirds in Space compilation movie on video, but I recorded over it like a foolish child trying to get my hands on more Dragon Ball episodes, which I regret to this day. But I still have a television recording of a Cap of Captain Scarlet and the Mysterions which was a compilation movie made from the series. Uh, I think it was called Captain Scarlet. I may be mistaken, but it was a much more serious take on the Thunderbirds um, motif about you know, uh, a secret organization dealing with alien invaders who were uh, um, who needed human bodies to exist. There were there was those incomporeal aliens, if you will. I'm probably saying the name wrong, but yeah, I still have that on videotape, and it's it's. It's weird too because I had no idea what the hell uh, the original Captain Scarlet series was, so I was utterly confused by the ending where they took like this random dream uh, episode that was basically a dream where all the characters died bizarrely comical hyperbolic death scenes that were meant to be serious, but they were just done ridiculously. Like the Captain Scarlet version of Brains like dies at a computer console at a computer console trying to figure out. Um, trying to figure out the aliens mode of attacks and just blows up there. It, 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 it seems weird <laughs> as a kid, you're totally invested in the fantasy and silliness of, of these characters dying. But when you grow older, you realize, Oh yeah, this is meant to be played for laughs. And then of course the story is revealed. It was well in the TV movie itself, they took this dream sequence episode and then redid it as the Mysterian saying that no, we shall reset time and return everything back the way it was. When in reality, you know, that that was like all post-production nonsense on the movie side. But yeah, I remember the compilation movies, Stephen. Thunderbirds to the Rescue, Thunderbirds in Outer Space, and Countdown to Disaster. Thunderbirds in Outer Space is the one I remember. That's, that's the one with the ro brain makes a robot. And unfortunately, I think the robot doesn't last more than one episode. But yeah, I regret recording over those. Um... There's a lot of old movies that used to be readily available to me uh, through recording and um, television airings that are sadly no longer around. Thankfully, I'm some of those movies are returning thanks to um, nice people on YouTube uh, uploading them on YouTube, as well as uh, lesser-known networks presenting these films. Uh, like, for example, The Warner Archive. Without them, I would not have a copy of Captain Sinbad or The Last Dinosaur, and gorgeous-looking copies at that. Uh, TCM, they occasionally show some of these old movies I grew up with. In fact, tomorrow night, uh, Turner Classic Movies is showing uh, Samson, Luises, and Hercules. Not a very good Pedlam movie from Italy with these three mystical heroes teaming up, but it does feature a giant killer seal in the first 15 minutes. So it's like I'm recording for giant monster posterity reasons. Um, let's see, hold on. Thunderbirds to rescue. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Steven. Like, I, I am a big fan of the original Thunderbirds, but I wish I had the original series as opposed to just the two movies. And I regret not holding on to those compilation movies. So, oh, by the way, since I love Giant Monsters so much, I I would definitely love to do illustrations of the couple of Giant Monsters I've shown up in the Thunderbirds franchise. Definitely the Rock Snakes from the first Thunderbird movies. Those guys were just awesome. And it was great to... I was like, as a little kid, I was already invested in the movie uh, because of all the cool special effects and the weird puppetry and all that. But then it's like all of a sudden giant, giant rock, Martian rock snakes from out of nowhere. And they have such a cool looking design too. It's like so, so retro and common to the sixties, but also kind of menacing and eerie in their own right. And the music and the effect sequences helps in that regard too. So the rock snakes, I would definitely love to do an illustration of. Uh, maybe the giant alligators from the Thunderbird series itself proper, but those creatures are kind of generic, so those won't really be fun to draw. And I think there were some, like, bizarre alien monsters from, like, a Thunderbird magazine story, but they only showed up in the magazine story. Uh, <laughs> wow, Gary Anderson really needed to do more giant monsters. Like, I know there was, I know there was a couple of giant beasties in Space 1999, uh, there was the giant space brain, which definitely counted as a giant monster, as well as the uh, the one-eyed octopoid dragon that devoured people uh, through a ship. But that was a fairly smaller creature. So, and if we were to get a technical, there were also some sentient trees in an episode of um, 
Yes, Stephen, I agree. The rock snakes were creepy. It's like creepy, but wonderfully creepy. It's like old school monsters are awesome. I would love to revisit them in a serious manner. Ah, so hold on. I, I got it. I got an itchy foot, ladies and gentlemen. And I got a pair of scissors. I'm going to use this to scratch my feet. Hopefully nothing horrible happened. Oh, my feet, they fell off. Why did I cut them off? Why? Why? <laughs> Uh, so getting back to Mystery Science Theater, I went on to a bit of a of a Thunderbirds tangent there. The second movie I watched in this Thunderbirds are go, uh, no, not Thunderbirds are go, in this Mystery Science Theater tr uh, triple feature. Hold on, uh, they were creepy. They ended up on Venus in the comic strip. Okay, yes, Venetian monsters. You're absolutely right, Stephen. And back then in the 50s and 60s, they still had uh, scientists and uh, science fiction writers still believe that venus was capable of uh sustaining life but because of the hot temperatures and the existence of water they believed it to be swamp life so there's a lot of stories in old school science fiction where venus is basically a planet of prehistoric monsters or should i say monsters from a prehistoric planet mm -hmm. anyone get that no okay but yeah i just had to wet my whistle there no, the monsters in the comic strip were really well designed and really cool looking. I'm, I'm kind of sad they didn't show up in the series proper. But I do have to ask you, Stephen, how the heck did our did our heroes of International Rescue end up on Venus in the first place? Like, what the heck happened? Were they like rescuing the doctor and then the time machine went crazy? I know, I, I, I know, I know I'm being a little cheeky there, but I, I had to say it. So, anyways, and, until Stephen can reply with that. The second movie in my Mystery Science Theater triple feature I watched was Terror from the Year 5000, which is a really low-budget early film from um, American International Pictures. The same people who gave us such stunning cinematic classics as The Amazing Colossal Man, I Was a Teenage Werewolf, and Dr. Five's Rise Again. This was definitely one of their Z-grade movies. This was the kind of movie that must have been on a on a double feature as the lower end of a double feature playing at 2 a.m. in the morning or as a double feature on one of the late night programmings because uh, American International, I know, was starting to get into television, made for television releases during that time, which ironically is where a lot of the original Gamera movies ended up on television first without any movie. Uh, the first Gamera movie was released in American theaters as Gamera the Invincible, but all the remaining movies all ended up and it, all the other movies ended up getting bought up by American International Pictures and released on television, with the exception of, I think, Gamma vs. Zegra and Gamma Super Monster, which came in way later and were released by uh, Sidney Frank on uh, USA Network and other cable channels, as well as VHS. And those were the ones that infamously ended up on Mystery Science Theater. Anyways... Uh, Terror from the Year 5000 is not Gamera. This is really low-budget stuff. Like, it opens up with stock footage and this overly excited uh, narrator going like, Mankind has broken through the jet barriers. We've broken through the space barrier. And then suddenly the really cool footage give way to the original footage of just, And now in a humble swamp, scientists try to break the final barrier. The time barrier! It's yeah, it's like obviously you ran out of money with the stock footage. And now we're just gonna film the rest of the swamp. Anyways, un Steven has replied. Hold on. It was to stop the formation of a new planet that was causing havoc on Earth. The explosion knocked Thunderbird 3 and it ends up crashing on Venus. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Uh, Steven says uh, they ended up on Venus in the comic strip. It was to stop the formation of a new planet. Uh, that was causing havoc on Earth. The explosion knocked Thunderbird 3, and it ends up crashing on Venus. That was one hell of an explosion. So the Thunderbirds 1, 2, and 4 ended up going to the rescue and recovery mission. That is awesome, actually. That's a really, that would have made a great idea for a movie if Thunderbirds was more open to doing giant monster stuff. It's almost like Thunderbirds goes to Monster Island to save Thunderbird 3. And Thunderbird 3, I believe, oh my God, I'm getting my ships wrong. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to get it wrong. I know it. But yeah, no, that's that's a really cool idea. Oh man, oh, just just all sorts of giant monsters our heroes could bump into. Are there any giant monsters in the reboot series? Because I I know there was like a a giant walking laboratory that did not move, but it was supposed to be like an underwater laboratory that was supposed to move like a giant sea crab on the ocean, but we never saw an action. 
um, because it was already destroyed and needed uh, rescuing. But anyways, until I can answer, I'm going to take another drink. Mm. Ah, that's great. Um, the, okay, so getting back to uh, Terror from the Year 5000, the story involves these two scientists who are using a homemade time machine to trade items from the present with people from the distant future. And uh, one of the items, this gold statue, very bizarre looking. Oh, Stephen has replied. It was supposed to be an episode in season two if it had continued for more episodes. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Stephen. So we got a bit of a giant monster, um, unmade giant monster history going on with the Thunderbirds. And wow, it's I wish there was a second season because if they were gonna go crazy with aliens with alien monsters and in their storylines, hell yeah, I would have loved to have seen it. <laughs> As opposed to some of the episodes we got in season one where uh a massive, um, a massive uh, logging machine goes out of control because somebody had some bad beans at a local restaurant. <laughs> it's, it's oh god, it's it's that episode. I I don't know if that's considered one of the worst Thunderbird episodes or not, but it's like oh, Mexican stereotypes abound. It's like I'm so sorry, Andres. It's like as bad as we as we rub you. It's nothing. It's nothing too bad. Uh, Stephen says. They do a homage to Attack of the Giant Alligators with Giant Bearded Lizards. Attack of the Lizards. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I can't go... <laughs> Steven, I appreciate these answers, but I can't go one day without discovering new giant monsters out of the woodwork. It's like, yesterday I thought I was I was golden. There was no giant monsters, and I decided to watch the latest review from Anime Abandoned from Sage to Bennett to Sage. And he reviews this really terrible uh, anime pilot for a... Um, for a comedy series that Gainax wanted to make but never ended. And out of nowhere, a normal human henchman only has the ability to grow into a 100-foot tall giant. And now it's like, ah, damn it. I can't go one day without finding a new giant monster. It's my blessing. It's my curse. And I will find the man responsible for it, who also murdered my parents in Crime Alley. For I am Wrath Man. All right, and Stephen also replies, for the comic story on Venus, look up the solar danger as they had models made of the alien creatures. Look them up. Oh, I, I've seen them before, but if I if I do another Google search, I might find better looking pictures of these creatures. Or maybe even new creatures that show up in, the mag in this comic proper. I'm going to do that in a little bit. But right now, I, let me finish off. Yeah, I might get this done before the morning. Yeah, I got almost everybody done except for the purple witch here, who's the next character. I'm not going to go into my thoughts about House. I really enjoyed the movie, but that's an illustration commentary coming in the future. So, okay, I'm going to take a little break and uh, look up Solar Danger. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to get. I'm going to finish my thoughts on the Terror from Year Five Thousand. All right, so this uh, duo of scientists are doing trades with people in the distant future with only the objects. They're not directly talking to the people from the future. Um, and uh, they decide to send one of these statues they get uh, to a scientist friend of theirs. Unfortunately, that's when they discover that the... Oh, my goodness. What is this? They discover that the, uh, the, the objects they've been getting from the future are highly radioactive. And this causes the scientist from the university to go down and meet the other two scientists at the swamp, where he also meets the fiance of one of the younger scientists. And a whole love triangle thing starts just out of nowhere. Uh, it turns out the people from the distant future are suffering from the effects of a ruined future. And that almost all of them grow, uh, despite being fairly intelligent beings, they're all highly radioactive mutations. So it's kind of like the, well, the daytime, not, no, what was that then? When Time Ended or The Day? The There's this old movie where a group of astronauts go into the distant future and some human beings are born normal, but other ones are born as hideous mutants and they're like huge cyclopses. Anyway, so in the... Oh, darn it. Where was I? Yeah, it's sort of the same thing except everyone's mutated and they all still receive their... They all maintain their intelligence as human beings. Uh, but they need fresh human genetic uh, material, namely blood. 
so that they can uh, free their future generations from being born as contaminated freak babies. So halfway into the movie, the people from the future managed to send one of their own back into the past, the titular terror from the year 5000, who was actually a sympathetic character, a female of their species. Unfortunately, she's highly radioactive, and unfortunately, just she's so desperate in her mission, she ends up killing a couple of, of, uh, of the characters in order to achieve her goals, because she wants to bring back the now-spurned fiancé scientist back into the future. And there's, it's a, again, it's like with a lot of these like old B-movies, there's some really interesting concepts being presented and some really cool story ideas. But it's all kind of ruined by like really shitty execution. Although the ending was interesting. Usually in these movies, you always get a big spiel about how we're not meant to, how man is not meant to play God and all that nonsense. And how, you know, we're not supposed to help these dying aliens or anything. But they do show sympathy for the, for the terror from the year 5000. And they do contemplate on sending some genetic material into the future to help them with their, with their needs. But they also... They also say mankind needs a change for the better in the future, and it, it's it's sort of it's supposed to be a hopeful ending, but also a warning towards the future too. So it's not it's not it's not like the ending of the mole people, where like the one good alien, or in this case, the one girl from the subterranean world, ends up you know getting killed just because there was like a mandate that's like all foreigners must be killed regardless of their species or content. So that's that's kind of a shame. So, but no, no, no. It's it's nice that the Terror from the Year Five Thousand got a little bit of sympathy towards the end. You don't really see that in a lot of B movies, but at the same time, it's such a ho hum, uh, a sludge to get through that film that it, unless you have a tolerance for B movies, you kind of miss out that fact. And like our heroes watching it, I think they were very flippant at the movie at the, in, at the end of the movie. So. Oh my goodness. I'm looking, uh, Stephen, I'm looking at pictures of the solar danger. And uh, the alien creature is actually really cool looking. Like, I, I'm familiar with the giant octopus type horror monster. It's like, hold on, I'm going to, I'm going to move the camera so we can actually, never mind. I just forgot. We have share screen. So I'm going to go share screen right now so we can look at these monsters from the Thunderbird story if i can oh there we go screen share yes i know what i'm doing now okay so here's the here's some of the um here was the google search for hold on for uh, solar danger the thunderbird story and there's a lot of really cool stories I would have loved to have seen this. Apparently, it was turned into a comic, so there's a lot more going on here. There's a lot of cool monsters. Um, I definitely got to look at this in detail later, but tonight is all about house. I got to finish coloring house. So that's the main thing. I can't get too, too distracted with new giant monsters. But yeah, I can't go one day without finding more giant monsters. It's, it's ridiculous. Hold on, Andres. Got less than 40 minutes until my next class, and I got to eat something. Okay, that's more than okay, friend. All right. Your golden... Don't worry about little me. Oh, crap, I'm on screen share. I should get out of here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm not that popular. So, but yeah, the alien creatures are really cool looking. I like, I really like this giant dragon thing that's coming out of what I assume to be a Venetian lake, but then you see it coming out of, out of the ground next to all these bulldozers. And yeah, this is some real kaiju stuff going on right here. This is great, man. These monsters are great looking and look at like, like Thunderbird. Oh, that's Thunderbird one. Thunderbird one is already huge in its own right, but it has something that big attacking it. Holy crap. Yeah, there's some great monsters in this. I wonder if it was just the two monsters. And of course, Century 21, or like old British comics, they would have like these gorgeous artwork for their comic books. Like, look at that. That's just amazing. I've seen some of the old Doctor Whos, especially the Patrick Thornton era, and they had some gorgeous artwork going on as well. 
Oh my goodness. It's like I my New Year's resolution for 2019 is to be a much better artist and to be on time with uh, commissions and uh, work and left and right. Like I'm not going to go one week without doing a new illustration or a new thumbnail. Um, but at the same time, it's like comic book writers back then, man, they could, they could dish this stuff out in a week and it would just be gorgeous. And look, I don't know if these are model shots from the abandoned episode or just like made for the magazine itself, but even, even like just the photographs and the models are gorgeous. Look at that. That is just beautiful. That's why I love Thunderbirds. It's just model effects that it's, it's, I, Steven, I have a whole half an hour video where I just gush about the Thunderbird franchise. So if you if you want to go look at my older videos, you'll find it. But yeah, oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Ring of Fire. Oh wait a minute, this is a separate story. Okay, I'm I'm out of, I'm completely out of the giant monster story. Okay. All right. Uh, for the comics, uh, indeed, they had an alien fish in Sulphur Lake that could eat metal. Okay, that explains some of the creatures I see here in the um, in the comic story. Okay, yes, this I think this guy. No, that's the other guy. All right, but no, I got the conf confirmation of three giant monsters. Thank you, Stephen. You you've made my day. <laughs> More giant monsters for Enchoma to gnaw his brain on. So, or is this the fish monster? This huge octopoid creature. I think that's that's supposed to be the monster in question. So, what beautiful red lips you have, Grandma. <laughs> oh, to kill you with the ah, Tracy. <laughs> Wait, you're not Grandma Tracy. Bum, bum, bum. That was my terrible Thunderbirds are Go fanfic. I hope you enjoyed that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I may actually end, end the live stream in a half an hour or an hour, depending on how things go. But definitely getting a lot of food for thought for me, Stephen. Thank you so much. Um, will do. Thank you so much. Yeah, in, oh wait, let me get out of the share screen first. Stop sharing. All right, and we're back to the normal camera, so. But yeah, Stephen, in the future, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I will definitely do a heads up. I'm not, I'm not just going to do an impromptu um, live chat like I did tonight. I'm so glad Wynn was able to join us. So we had plenty of fun at the first two hours, three hours, actually. Holy crap. Oh, I hope, I hope she, I hope she gets a good night's sleep and wakes up in time for work because working the morning shift. Well, 10 o'clock isn't too bad. So the fish creatures were in the comic only. All right. Thank you, Stephen, for clearing that up. Thank you so much, Stephen. It's nice to get so much information on Obscure Kaiju. So, but I must get back to the artwork for now. Okay, so Terror from the Year 5000 5, was, uh, it was okay. But it's like, I think I have a much greater tolerance for B-movies than other people. And that's why I think, oh, no problems. Yes, yeah, Stephen says no problem. It's like, yes, absolutely, Stephen. So, no, in the future, if I do another live stream, I'm going to do it early and try to schedule it better with people instead of just doing it out of the blue like I'm doing now. And I will definitely give a heads up, and hopefully you can join us again, Stephen. You are a really wonderful company. It's the Stephen Raff Show! Ba -da 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 -da. Hey, Stephen! I barely know him, but he likes Puppet Tree and Thunderbirds and Power Rangers, and I kind of like those too. Ha ha! <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I will never sing again. I promised, and yet I still betrayed my promise. But yeah, for uh, 2019, I want to be on top of artwork more so than I've ever been before. And uh, expect to see more illustration commentaries. And uh, when I do live streams, I'll just be doing stuff like this. Although, as you can see, I am going a little slower than I should. That's because I'm terrible at multitasking and me talking and doing all this other thing is a bit of a distraction, but it's worth it. I'm having fun here. It's, it's all, it's all, it's all good. So, oh, I almost forgot the thumb. You don't want to do that. Kind of a simple gradient job I'm doing here. Steven says, thanks. Oh, oh always pal. So, and then he's going to, there's a lag going on, so any moment he's going to hear the horrible song I'm about I'm about to sing that I sang a while ago, and he's going to, I bet the the comment in the section is going to be like, no, no, <laughs> and then Stephen jumps out the window. It's like never again. <laughs> well, I guess this is one soul international rescue couldn't save. <laughs> so, 
Uh, so getting back to the Mystery Science Theater triple feature I had, the last movie I watched was Track of the Moon Beast. I've seen Track of the Moon Beast before, and I think I even have it on VHS somewhere. Um, when it was on the last couple of months, it was still playing on Sci-Fi Channel, which ironically was the first couple of months I got Sci-Fi Channel. So yeah, it was the long a long wait to get Sci-Fi Channel wasn't worth it because by then, all their cool older net older programming was phased out, and less than a couple of weeks after Mystery Science Theater stopped airing, we got um, a sci we got our first of the Sci-Fi Channel original movies, so like Shark Hunter and Octopus, and it was just downhill from there. But anyways, uh, Track of the Moon Beast is another movie where there's a lot of really good story and character elements going on, but it's such a low budget, almost nothing production. It's you, you can't appreciate it unless you have the patience for it. And Steven says, I heard worse songs. Thank you, Steven. <laughs> so, oh, my goodness. If, if you check out the Waffle Man short film, uh, the original song that I sang was completely replaced by Brayton when he decided to sing for me, Ayla, like the Disney Renaissance, how they, the voice actors would never sing their own songs, minus for exceptions. And I think it was for the better. It's like I, I can barely hold a tune, especially when I try to sing. Like I might be able to hold a tune for like co comedic reasons, but not when I'm trying to do it sincerely. So, and his track of the Moon Beast is one of the movies that have a lot of really good story and character elements, but it's such a low budget, no nothing movie that it's easy to get bored and not give a crap about it. The story, oh man, it's such a complicated story. I'm I'm almost tempted just to do an epi like another unriffed episode with Brayton and talk about it further. Um, that's a story where, okay, it takes place in the middle of like the, uh, like the Albuquerque desert, basically. And I have, I, my mom comes from uh, New Mexico and that whole area. So it's very, very reminiscent. I recognize some of the areas or at least the feel of it. Um, and the story evolves this young man who is more or less a loner, but he's not a bad guy or anything. He just happens to live by himself a solitary life. And he hooks up with this girl, and they're watching a meteor shower. Unfortunately, a fragment of moon rock from the meteor shower, um, Stephen writes, uh, depends on the note and pitch of the song. Well, definitely failed in both both regard, my friends. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, hey, we got a bit of a pun. See, there's, there's George Went. I'm holding a drink. I said, cheers. There you go, George Went. Okay. Oh. <laughs> So, so this young man gets hit. We're, we're not really a young man. We're, we're talking like a 20-something <laughs> or a 30-year-old pretending to be a 20-year-old. Gets hit in the head with a, a bit of moon rock. It's just a grazes his head, but it's enough to enlarge it there. He doesn't get grazed. It, it goes in there, but it's nothing fatal or anything. Unfortunately, as the story goes on, the moon rock... Uh, causes the man to mutate into this reptilian monster. And it's one of those basic kind of like werewolf stories. Whenever it gets nighttime, he becomes this beast and he goes out and commits murders against his own will, or unconsciously at that, I might add. Uh, thankfully, his friends, uh, the girl he meets, uh, kind of a cute little... Um, she's cute. She kind of reminds me of... Uh, uh, God, what's the name of that actress who always showed up in um, soap operas? No, no, oh, I'm not even. I'm not even trying. I'm not gonna try. I think I had her name earlier in the night too because I was thinking about her. I always think about her. <laughs> oh, anyways, Mor Morgan Fairchild. Yes, yeah, she looked a little bit like Morgan Fairchild, the lead actress in this movie. Although, kind of a kind of a nitwit in her own regard, but that might have just been the charm of the movie. And uh, a, a Native American uh, professor, a uh, friend of theirs. Johnny Longbow, who is definitely the best character out of the whole movie. I'm not just saying that because I have Navajo blood in me, but because he, it's, it's just, he's like one of those like science fiction, the movie scientist who's too cool for school, for lack of a better term. Like, you know, it's like, hey there, Johnny, it's me, Johnny Longbow. I'm here to help you with my sexy voice. <laughs> and I know so much wonderful things about science. Can I make you a corn? A burrito, <laughs> you know, something like that. But no, it's it, it's all it's the best character in the whole movie. So much so that I'm, I was not surprised to find a fan art dedicated to this suave scientist. 
So and a Native American one too. You don't really see that often. So. So anyways, one element about tracking the moon beast I found very interesting is that halfway in the movie, when they discover what what is happening to the the poor um, the poor young man who's been inflicted with this moon rock that turns them into a reptilian beast every night is that instead of panicking about or keeping a secret, they actually inform the authorities because Johnny Longbow was working alongside some friendly police officers. That's another really cool subplot in the movie. And they decide to actually reasonably and logically try to work and help Johnny with this situation. They, they first lock him up in a, in a cell to see if he transforms and he does. So they keep him overnight. And then they hire some brain surgeons to come and try to get the moon rock out of his head. So that, and, and of course they tell him it's not his fault. He murdered pe people in his basically unconscious phase and that he'd be forgiven for it. So there might be some compilations later, but no, no, it's, it's like something you don't feel would happen in real life. If, if we discovered somebody was a werewolf instead of angry villagers, the authorities work with the unfortunate victim in question to try to improve the situation the way through science and reasoning. You don't see that in a lot of B movies and um, related horror movies and whatnot. Usually it's characters making dumb decisions under desperate uh, characters making dumb decisions under desperate sit situations. And even if they weren't making dumb decisions, they were still, um, they were still, um, they're still in a desperate situation. Sorry about that. Uh, Stephen Walker says, not too familiar with soap operas. It's okay, Stephen. There, there's so many out there. And I, I, prob I probably got the name of the actress wrong too, Morgan Fairchild, or at least the one I was trying to compare her to. So, hold on. My throat is parched and I need another drink. Ah, that 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 hit the spot. <laughs> Pink lemonade. It's what it's what for dinner. Yeah, Morgan Fairchild was the actress I was thinking of. She's not in Track of the Moon Beast, but yeah, it's the actress looks a lot like Morgan Fairchild in her better day. Unfortunately, Morgan Fairchild has not aged very well. It's a shame too because she was quite a looker for a long time. So, anyways, but yeah, Track of the Moon Beast. Um, they try to help the young man with the unfortunate affliction of becoming a giant reptile monster at night. Unfortunately, they realize that the stone itself is basically combustible. And if they try to take it out, it basically would result in an explosion that would take the old young man out. So the young man escapes because he wants to die as a human and he contemplates suicide in the desert. Unfortunately, before he can do it, he transforms into a lizard again under the cover of darkness. And Johnny Longbow has no choice but to shoot an, uh, a arrow that's tipped with another moon rock which causes a chain reaction which causes the lizard to blow up at the end D don't worry the episode's still worth watching because of the uh, mystery science theater um commentary but yeah it's it's and it's from 1976 which is like the last the last great era of like bad b movies getting released in theaters before the star wars made it you know <laughs> before the Star Wars made it impossible to release your crap, at least for a little while. I know that throughout the 80s, there was a lot of independent productions going on. And it's also one of those movies where the poster looks way cooler than the actual movie itself. Like, I'm looking at it on Wikipedia right now, and the lizard monster is done in this beautiful, almost Frank Vanzetta type artwork. But the movie itself, yeah, the creature is pretty pathetic. He makes the Gorn and Star Trek look like looks like a Jim Hansen creature shop production. So, so it's, it, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty sad in that regard. Um, yeah. So the lead character who transforms the monster is a uh, named Paul G uh, Carlson. Um, and, uh, the woman who I was comparing to comparing to, uh, Morgan Fairchild is Lee Drake as Kathy Nolan. And of course, our lead hero, Professor John Johnny Longbow Salinas, is I'm probably saying that words wrong. Salinas is played by an actor named Giorgio Sala. So, yeah, there's a lot of really good story elements going on in Track of the Moon Beast, but it's such a low budget, no nothing. That again, like the 
like the terror from the year 5000 it's 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 not worth going through so it's gonna it's gonna suck in that regard but yeah i was able to watch all three mystery science theater movies in a row thanks to the wonders of youtube uh various youtube uploaders i might say and it was it was very pleasant it was just good things to have playing while i was doing artwork so so there you go and that's basically my review of those three mystery science theater movies i saw and uh i'm going to i'm going to hold how long have we been going so far three hours i th i think that's more than good enough because the last live stream we did was about two hours and a half and um brayton is going to come on tonight but that's okay this was all last minute and he's a very busy boy. He's he's getting that Mystery Science Theater fan episode ready. And ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna be worth it. It's you guys are gonna enjoy it immensely. It may not. It's gonna come out soon. That, that's all I can say. Uh, I also got to focus on this illustration, so a little bit of peace and quiet might be better. But uh, Stephen, if you're still listening, if you got any re last questions for me, uh, by all means, ask away. I will definitely answer them before I end the live stream tonight. So if not, if uh, if you say you're good, then I will end it too. But I want to, like, I know there's, like, very few people are watching this right now. But like I said, I want to thank my subscribers. I have, like, 195 of you, and I know that's not much, but it was, it, it's fantastic. It's fantastic to know that many people saw glimpses of my videos, and it's like, hey, this eccentric loony from, from the loony bin, he seems interesting enough. I'll subscribe to him. And and it's like, I know my videos don't get 195 uh, watches instantly, but at the same time, it is great to know that there is a, a bit of a fan base there. Uh, Steven replies, yep, okay. Um, I guess you're good, Steven. All right, so I guess I will end this in a little bit. So, um, by the way, before I, end, um, before I end this live stream, I will recommend definitely go check out the 1986 horror comedy House. It's a very fun movie. Um, I plan on doing an illustration commentary sometime in February about this movie and this title card I'm working on where I'll go into more detail about what I love about the movie. But the best way I can describe it is it's sort of like Poltergeist and Evil Dead 2 if it took place in the world of the real Ghostbusters, not the movie Ghostbusters, but the real Ghostbusters, the animated series. And, oh, Steven has a reply, so we'll be, we'll be replying to him in a little bit. But yeah, that, that would explain the very colorful monsters. Like, technically, these are supposed to be ghosts and poltergeists, but they're portrayed more like demonic cartoon monsters. And it's like really good creature effects and special effects of all. It stars the lead actor from uh, The Greatest American Hero, and he's an affable enough hero, even though he, he's nowhere near as spectacular as the weird creatures in question that he's fighting. Richard Maul is the mate is the big bad named Big Ben. Ironically, he's great. A lot of great things about the movie, so I highly recommend it. And and anything with George Went on the side is always welcome because George Went, George Went is a lot of fun. Like I, I I you know I I I hope he, I hope I hope he's around long enough that I can cast him into something if if I if I get lucky. But I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. So, but yeah. Um, so let's look at Stephen Walker's final question or, or one of many final questions. Go ahead and go ahead and send them along, Stephen, because that's the only thing that's going to keep this live stream going for a little bit longer. Unless, Br unless Brayton Connor shows up and all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, great. Another two hours down the drain. Uh, his question is what other franchises would work well in the th in a Thunderbirds crossover? You know, the Thunderbirds is such a unique series in its own right, it would be impossible to do a proper crossover, especially considering the gigantic marionette in the room, in the sense that the gigantic puppet elephant in the room, in the sense that the characters are marionettes, or in, in the case of the new reboot, um, CGI characters. So it would be impossible to have them like meet Jake and the Fat Man without uh, Jake and the Fat Man being Muppets or some nonsense like that. But um, it, it, it's like if you were to do like a comedy crossover between the Thunderbirds and another franchise uh, while not going overboard in the meta humor, I think maybe like, I don't know, like uh, I remember the Mystery Science Theater crowd when they want to do their own move. The, they, their original plan for the movie was they would actually have adventures within the movies. And it'd be funny to see like 
you know, like like marionette versions of Crow, Tom, and Servo interact with the Thunderbird uh, crew and actually get into adventures with them. Honestly, like like the more like the more fun sketches from the show itself when they weren't riffing the movies. But as far as serious science fiction crossovers would go, I, I would it would not be hard to see crossovers within other Gary Anderson television shows like Stingray. Obviously, I have a very good feeling that Stingray exists in the same universe as Thunderbirds. Probably not officially, but you know the character designs look similar, and the Stingray crew are so much into the ocean that it, it separates them from a lot of the things that the Thunderbird International Rescue does proper. Uh, maybe something with the you know the Captain Scarlet crew, even though that story was way more darker and serious than what Thunderbirds and Stingray would offer. Uh, there was also that like that the smart kid. Uh, there was that old black and white show that Gary Anderson did about the kid like the kid with the glasses who was as intelligent as a supercomputer and was a secret agent. Um, I don't know. I, I know Steven's probably gonna they do that in the mis oh are you serious? There's an actual. Oh, wait, wait, them going into movies and meeting with old com. Okay. I thought it's like, oh, did we have an official Mystery Science Theater crossover? No, no. They're just, he's just mentioning the Mystery Science Theater comic going on right now, which is actually a very good comic book. I'd recommend it's a, it's a great mix of reusing older properties with a uh, new commentary and jokes. But yeah, no, I, I could like uh, Frank 90 or Sam 90. I can't think of it. I, hold on. Let me look up the series. So I'm not. I'm not just blowing smoke out of my my proverbial behind. So, <laughs> Gary Anderson, Gary Anderson shows. Where are you? Speaking of like Thunderbirds uh, comedy crossovers, I, I you know it'd be weird like Garth Marenghi's Dark Place meets Thunderbirds, like make like you know that would be like a weird combination that would be fun to do, but um, hold on. I put in Gary Anderson and get a football player. Gary Anderson Thunderbird. Thunderbirds are go. Dun 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 He's such a cool guy. I would have met I would have liked to have met Gary Anderson. So although he would probably have something against I don't know, it's like they you know the old saying, never meet your heroes. It's it's like 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 I like I enjoy the works of H. P. Lovecraft, but unless I met H. P. Lovecraft a week before he died, he probably would not be the most receptive of having me having a big old messing guy come and give him a hug. It's like I love your works. Thank you. You go go away, please. So, okay, I'm going to I'm going to find out what the name of this show is. The one I was thinking of. Joe ninety, thank you, Stephen. You you gave me the answer before I can find it on uh on uh I've never seen an episode of Joe ninety. Is that any good? I forgot. There's a thirty second lag. Oh, and Supercar. Although the characters in Supercar are a little more cartoonish than what were expected in uh, Gary Anderson programs. So especially the lead hero who looks like he's. Any other series, the lead hero of Supercar would be the villain, but it, it's like, I, I guess he's counts as like dashing or bizarre looking. But then again, isn't that a great thing about the early Gary Anderson uh, puppet shows that they're almost like live action Astro Boy cartoons in the character design department? So, oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna end the live stream pretty soon. I'm starting to get a headache and I need to, I need to take a rest. <laughs> I will be up tonight to continue work on this nice illustration. But yeah, I just gotta do Sandy Wish. That came out wrong. I just gotta finish the gradients on uh, the the purple witch here, and then I will just add some extra dark gradients here and there, and uh, do some of the effects work on like the wine glass here and the beer bottle. And I think I will be done with this. Um, illustration it'll be good to go to brent uh brendan tenold and hopefully it'll be the episode in question will be released this week although i did i did miss the original deadline of the 20th the, no 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 the 22nd i think god damn it <laughs> like i said i'm gonna be a better artist this time so at least 
at, at least I won't be weeks on ends late. Although knowing Brayton and Andres are probably watching this and laughing their asses off. It's like, ah, ha, he fails. Ha, ha, I will get you too. When you least suspect it, I will destroy you. So, and uh, Steven says, never watched a full EP of uh, Joe 90. Not enough to have an opinion. Okay. Fair enough, Steven. So, I'm going to end the live stream pretty soon. So, if you have one last question, Stephen, go and present it while I make my final final thoughts. Thank you so much for this, guys. Um, I think I next time in the future, I will definitely give a heads up on, um, on live streams. And I will definitely maybe not do artwork while at the same time I have people on. Because I may do it to the side, but if I have a deadline going on like tonight, it's a little unprofessional and I don't multitask. Although, thankfully, Wynn was such such wonderful company that it didn't distract too badly so i'm talking to people and being sociable yay <laughs> uh so there you go and uh hopefully you'll see more of this very soon on my deviant site um where can you find i'm known as in shoma just if you go on deviant if you put my name in shoma in there You'll find you'll find my gallery and tons of other works I'm related to, like other illustrations I've done coloring for, and illustrations from my other website. Mm. Uh, I also have a blog in Shoma's Corner. Um, nothing major happens there, although I do plan on getting back onto it with a lot of giant monster-related posts. And of course, here's my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to try to do more short films and uh, actual, honest to goodness content outside just live streaming. And I also my official Facebook is in Shoma Lives, um, and that's the one that's open to the public. So you can view that uh, with or without a uh, Facebook membership, or at least uh, that was the plan. Hopefully, uh, Stephen says I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. So thank you, Stephen, very much for your company. It was a nice extension to the win uh, portion. Uh, big thanks again to Win. Uh, for uh, being tonight's guest, that was a big surprise, especially for my heart. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Sean Barry and uh, Arkham Knight Rider and Lydia for uh, showing up briefly, um, as well as to you um, and to the one troll we had. You really need to open your eyes because if you think that joke is funny, trust me, give it a couple of years. Oh, Caucasians in your position will be treated just as badly because considering, yeah, we'd be screwed regardless who's in the White House right now. That's That's how bad things are getting. So I know you think it might be funny, but it won't. What about review on my... Damn you, Brayton, you scumbag. Yeah, Br Brayton Connor shows up. If Oh, my God. Okay, Brayton. <laughs> Brayton Connor says, what about review all monsters? I'm not going to get into that, but let's just say that Jesse has a lot of things going on his plate. And uh, thankfully, he's he's given us the blessing that if we do more episodes of Unrift, we can we can tackle some of the giant monster related episodes of Mr. Science Theater. So that's a good compromise. And if not, there are so much giant monster related material I can talk about that they can make their own videos. There's illustration commentaries I can easily do by myself with Brayton Connor's help, God willing. There are a lot of obscure monsters or lesser known giant monsters outside the usual well-known Toho monsters who could use more loving either through illustration commentaries or even just as their own standalone videos. And um, that's basically it. So yeah, no, I can do a lot of different videos and uh, hopefully like, like when these mystery science theater episodes are ready, there'll be plenty of more gamma material. Yeah. It's just fan. It's fan related stuff, but it's gamma related. And I like gamma quite a bit. I like gamma. I like turtles. So, now, let me see, before I officially end this, let me make sure uh, our, our, our good sir, Breaking Connor, doesn't want to come on. Because if he doesn't, because I'd be more than happy to extend this for at least another 40 minutes or 30 minutes if Breaking wants to come on. But if not, I'm going to end it now and <laughs> just talk to him after I take a long break. Because I, my mouth is dry and I'm running out of pink lemonade. So, hmm. hold on. All right. 
<laughs> Doing giant monsters, hideous, flabby shoulder. Getting back to house, I think I'll, I'll I'll end I'll end this podcast with house. It's a really fun movie. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have the it doesn't have the flair and the uh, wow factor of say the Evil Dead Two or the original Ghostbusters. But it's a very fun movie in that regard. The creatures are very fun. It's a it's one of it's one of those monster fun house movies where there's a new monster every couple of minutes. Um, and it's it's a really cool story. I, I love the two lead villain monsters, the Purple Witch and the Big Ben here, who are are featured in this illustration. And yeah, it's a very fun movie. So I would highly recommend it. It's a little slow in the first half an hour, but it when it gets going, it really gets going. And Definitely check out how I know the sequel to House, House Two: A Second Story, has more fans. But House Two: A Second Story, that that's that that's that's the fine wine you enjoy at the end of a good meal. So I'm not I'm not saying anything just the movie. I'm just saying definitely check out the first movie so you can enjoy the second movie a lot more. And yeah, House: The Second Story is is it's to quote the Crimson Weirdo, it's a weirdy. So okay. So let's see what Brayton, I refuse. Thank you, Brayton. Thank you for nothing, you son of a gun. I hope you rot in the desert, on the bones, on a horse with no name. You son of a... Okay, anyways. So ladies and gentlemen, that's officially it for this live stream of consciousness or not so late night with Shoma. In fact, I think that's going to be the subtitle. Thank you so much for joining me and and big thanks to all my subscribers who are probably no doubt going to watch this later. Probably just as terrifying background music or noise to go on. But thank you, everybody. Thank you, Wynn. Thank you, uh, Stephen. Uh, no, thanks to Brayton. And Lydia. It was fun to have you around, Lydia, too. Um, yeah, no, thank you, everybody. Uh, Sean Barry. Um, Arkham Knight Rider. Yeah, no, thank you, guys. Thank each and every one of you. And also, I'll give I'll give it to the one troll we had earlier. At, le at least you disappeared quicker than later. At, at least you knew when to back down. But yeah, buddy, if you if you think the world is your oyster, you're screwed because we're all gonna be we're all gonna be at the bottom of the barrel eventually. So that's how bad things are gonna. <laughs> Optimism with Shoma. Okay. So good night, everybody, and thank you so much, and goodbye. I love you. Oh, wait a minute. I just can't end it. Like, hold on. I know exactly how to end this. I know exactly how it should be ended. In honor of Ernie Kovacs, we have to end it a little bit on a song. Hold on. This thing is already four hours, so we can we, we I can afford to do something stupid. Hold on. We'll start it how we ended. We'll we'll end it how we started it.
do, do, mi, do, fa, re, so, so, do, do, mi, fa, si, re, si, mi, la, do, la, fa, re, so, so, do, mi, do, fa, si, re, si, mi, la, do, la, fa, re, so, so, do, mi, so, la, re, fa, re, so, do, mi, do, fa, re, so, so, mi, so, la, re, fa, re, so, Oh. 